of America's favorite Halloween traditions, from sweet treats and horror films to a 3,000-year-old Mexican celebration that's growing right here in the United States. Now, first up, we're gonna explore why we love to be scared. From haunted houses, theme park thrill rides, and of course the movies, we all love a good fright, right? Well, we started by going behind the scenes at Icons of Darkness, a horror movie hall of fame featuring the world's largest collection of new special effects, props, and costumes. These are called life casts. These were all very famous horror film actors. They would use the life cast to build makeups. Now, the most famous face in horror history is right up there, which is the Frankenstein monster from 1931. Frankenstein, Freddy, Chucky, the Joker, and way too many creepy clowns. It's almost like you're stepping through the screen to stand next to your favorite nightmares. At the Icons of Darkness, a 2,000 piece collection of the original props, costumes, and special effects valued at over $16 million. I can't get over being this close to Hollywood history, but this is this is the sweater. There's his glove, his hat, his sweater, his pants, his boots, everything. Rich Carell is the owner of this vast collection. And if he looks lately familiar, it's probably because he still has his boyish good looks from his days back in the 1960s on Leave It to Beaver, appearing besides Jerry Mathers. Somehow you went from Leave It to Beaver to all this. It actually started uh, with Leave It to Beaver because Jerry Mathers and I were huge horror movie fans. And being at Universal, that's where Beaver was shot. We kept saying to our makeup man, hey, take us to the makeup lab. And when 10-year-old Rich finally got that tour of the makeup lab at Universal Studios, I saw this head in the trash from a movie called Abbott and Costello Meet Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And I knew what it was. You know, and Boris Karloff played Dr. Jekyll. And it was in the trash. I, be, I, you know, I thought someone was going to throw coffee on it or something. So I took it out of the trash, and that's how all this started. After three seasons on Leave it to Beaver, Rich was catapulted into a career in entertainment, directing and producing, and working on classic 90s sitcoms, Family Matters, Full House, and Step by Step. But through it all, his passion for all things horror never waned. Do you see a connection between comedy and, and laughter and horror and, and fright? Absolutely. I mean, most people who get scared, first they get scared, they scream, and then they laugh. The scarier, the better, because they think, oh, I can do that, that's not gonna scare me. And if it does, they end up running out laughing. It's really fun. Scaring people is a bit like a challenge. That's one of the original face huggers from Aliens. And if you look close enough, there's a signature. The guys who built these things have signatures on them. <laughs> a challenge that Rich wins again. Freddie's one of the coolest guys that we have here. <laughs> and again. She's really good too. <laughs> And again, <laughs> once you finally catch your breath and you realize, no, you cannot control when you scream, you start to wonder, what is the psychology that draws some of us to want to be spooked out of our minds? So we have sociologist Margie Kerr, author of Scream, Chilling Adventures in the Science of Fear. The biggest trend we observed in the brainwave activity was that it went down. The message that we got from this is that, you know, doing something really scary, it makes it so that you're kind of tuned out of your head. You're not getting caught up in your thoughts. And we found that those patterns were associated to people reporting to feel better. And if scaring ourselves gets us out of our head, a visit to Icons of Darkness is a portal to that dimension. I used to have so many nightmares of Chucky. This is the, the T-Rex hydraulic head used in the first Jurassic Park. So here's Jack Nicholson's coat and his shirt and one of the original axes. And when we made this head, oh. it has acrylic teeth, glass eyes, punched hair, silicone sweat. That's not a person? No, it looks pretty good, huh? I've never traded or sold anything in 54 years of collecting this stuff. So the collection is not about increasing value or, or making money. This is about honoring the art. These movies made me happy for my whole life. So I'm kind of giving back the best I can. The, the women and the men who made all these things are very important to me. So. Keeping their legacies alive, that's really important as well. <laughs> I still cannot believe how many times they got me, and you know what neighborhood I'm gonna be hitting for trick-or-treating this year. You can also take a tour of Rich's collection here in Hollywood if you are looking for an extra spooky time. And speaking of spooky, one couple in Seattle is bringing monsters to life, taking their yard's Halloween display to a whole new level and connecting with the community in the process. Dylan Dreyer has our next story. This is my monster, a laser. He doesn't look that dangerous, but he actually really is. 
the little fuzz twins, but I call them fuzzles. Diet is of fish and dragon's teeth. Turns into a werewolf on Mother's Day. Welcome to the Ridgecrest Monster Zoo, the brainchild of its zookeepers, John Small and Stella Caldwell. What is a monster zoo? <laughs> It is a place where the monsters are not captive at all. They came to us. The kids in the neighborhood sent us pictures and field notes, and we kind of took it from there and turned their drawings into the monsters that are out in the zoo out in front of our house. These monsters are getting ready to shine for their favorite and spookiest time of year. The Monster Zoo has been a welcome addition to John and Stella's neighborhood, inspiring a parade that drew well over a thousand visitors last Halloween. In March of 2020, when the pandemic struck, they both found themselves out of work and looking for a project to keep them occupied. So I was cleaning in the uh, garage and I came across some of my son's old artwork from school. Stella came up with the idea of having local kids create monster art like her son's childhood drawing that they would submit to be built as a yard decoration for the monster zoo. John helped by building a Facebook page for the submissions. Scalehorn was our first monster and then from there other monsters started showing up. With his skills in set design and lighting, John wanted to bring Stella's idea to life and the two got to work on a pandemic project transforming the monster drawings into eye-popping yard art. I've been working in theater for my entire adult life. Some of it's been professional theater, some of it's been very fringe. So there's a lot of crafting and figuring out what to do with the materials you have and a lot of improvising. So this will glue on the back, back side. side. One of the things that has continued to surprise me is that over two years later, we're still making them. And we have nearly 100. So this is Lucy Ina. Uh, Coco drew her. Along with the drawings, the kids filled out field notes indicating their monster's habitat, diet, scientific name, and superpowers. Mimi. Uh, she is a uh, uni ham bun, so unicorn hamster bunny. This is one of the scarier guys, Rip Jaw. He lives in your backyard and he eats humans, so be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Recently, a new monster called Zippy, created by Ruben, was unveiled and added to the Monster Zoo. Zippy! <laughs> I'm Ruben and this is Zippy. He lives deep in the jungle. The rainbow makes him um, nice, but if the rainbow falls off, then he's evil, and he turns into a demon. That's a twist. They're all our favorites. John and Stella are most proud of how the Monster Zoo has brought their community together these last two years, and they can't wait to give more monsters their forever home this Halloween season. What's our favorite thing to hear out the window? There's a new monster, Mom. There's a new monster. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for that story, Dylan. And zookeepers John and Stella are hard at work creating new monsters for the Monster Zoo's busiest time of year. They're hoping that more neighborhoods all across the country can start their own monster zoos, and they say that they would love to make that happen in any way they can. And next up, time to trick or treat. We get a sneak peek at how two Halloween classics are made right after the break. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Hey, I'm Hallie. It's good to be with you tonight. There's another legal filing today, and I want to cut through some of the weedsy stuff. And let's just, like, get to the point. They have started to vote on the PACT. If you're like, Hallie, stop speaking Washingtonese. This bill would basically give health care to veterans who have exposed to these toxic chemicals. So Scott, I'm trying to make this as not D.C. as possible. The increased sort of anger that we've seen now in politics. I saw you searching for, I think, your microphone, Dan. Yeah. You are, oh, I was you trying got it. to do it on the slide. Live TV, man. It's okay.
Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back, and now for some sweet, sweet Halloween candy trivia. The Reese's Peanut Butter Cup was created back in 1928 by a former Hershey's employee, H.B. Reese. And even after all these years, people still can't get enough of the peanut butter cups. They were voted America's number one Halloween candy last year, and NBC News' Kristen Dahlgren got rare access into the plant to see how those Reese's Peanut Butter Cups are made. It's that perfect combination of peanut butter and chocolate, dreamed up by H.B. Reese in 1928, when the Hershey worker thought he needed to come up with his own idea to help put his 16 kids through school. Originally called the Penny Cup, Reese's now does over three billion in business each year. It's one of America's favorites, and mine. So I didn't mind donning a hairnet. If how do I look? If it meant rare access to see how those little cups of deliciousness are crafted. My tour guide, Courtney Laird. I'm the peanut butter business unit manager, and I'm going to take you through the lines today. That may be the best title ever. Right? I don't mind it. This smells so good. That's because they make their own peanut butter. We roast around a million pounds of peanuts a week. Wow, a week. Yeah, so this is where we barrel uh, fresh peanut butter that we just made uh, from the roasting process. This whole thing is filled with peanut butter? Filled with peanut butter. Of course, it wouldn't be Reese's without... This is liquid chocolate. How many people have gotten fired for sticking their hands under that? None that I know of. Who are these people with such amazing self-control? This plant has nearly 800 employees. Some working here for over 40 years. There are some things that technology just can't do for us, and that's where we have some remarkable employees here that make sure that we have the proper cut paper, one in each spot. Can I try this? Absolutely. It's already getting ahead of me. <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks. This is why Lucy was like shoving them all in her mouth. It's so fast. Do you ever ask them to slow it down? Oh boy. Oh gosh. Next stop. Assembly. First layer of chocolate goes down. What makes your chocolate special in these is a very special secret and that I can't share the ingredients. You're afraid I'm going to go into the peanut butter cup. Yes, just Get in it. case, just in case. How many cups come through in a day? So this line, we produce about 20,000 pounds. A day. A day on this line, yes. Add some peanut butter, a chocolate top. This is starting to look more like what we're used to. Yes, yes, yep, absolutely. Brings it all together. A quick cool down. This is what I think for heaven. Right. And one more real person to double check. We have Tanya here. Um, she's helping make sure that we pick off any deformed candy, um, any candy that has multiple cup papers on the bottom. That is actually one of our biggest consumer complaints on our product. Tanya, if you want to throw any of those my way, I've got pockets. <laughs> Finally, a classic orange wrapper. So around 800 cups a minute that we're wrapping. All that hard work that you just did back there, this is the final product. You're welcome, America. Armed with all that experience, I'm ready to make my own. A giant one pound cup with a choice of fixings. So let's do potato chips, bacon, pretzels, and peanuts. Mm. I'm pretty confident that I made the next big thing here. They take their devotion to Reese's pretty seriously. That's the Fighting Cuppy, mascot for Reese's University, an initiative, not a college, devoted to the die-hard Reese's fan, founded by the conveniently named Ryan Reese. R-I-E-S-S. -S. No relation? Unfortunately. Tell me about Reese's University and where do I sign up? We started a year or two ago because we thought about the love and passion that people have for the Reese's brand is only matched by how people feel about their favorite teams. We're accepting applications, and I think I have potentially some good news. I am proud to welcome you to Reese's University. Look You've been that. accepted. And based on this interview, I am happy <laughs> to award you with an honorary doctorate. I am very proud 
to accept this and to continue my chocolate and peanut butter eating for years to come. Thanks, Kristen. Now, no matter what you might think of this, candy corn is the staple of the Halloween season. It has been around for a hundred years. So we're gonna take you inside of a factory that not only works with the famous candy, but a lot of other iconic sweet treats. And all that is coming right up. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide. How's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Now, when you think of Halloween, a few things come to mind, right? Trick-or-treating, costumes, and candy corn. So for our next story, Al Roker headed to Ferrara Candy Factory in Illinois to learn about a couple of their brands, like Nerds, Sweet Tarts, and most importantly, Brock's Candy Corn. We share delight in every bite because we have such simple candies that bring such delight to people's lives. Katie Duffy is the general manager of seasonal business at Ferrara, which makes treats like lemon heads, Laffy Taffy, Nerds, Sweet Tarts, and Brock's Candy Corn, which has been around since the 1920s. How much candy corn do you actually make? We are the number one leading maker of candy corn. We have over 86% share of candy corn. Wow. When we're producing it, we make 300,000 pounds a day. We eat that much candy corn? Yep. I'm missing something. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> Brock's makes several varieties of candy corn. And in the spirit of the season, I gave the autumn harvest corn a taste. OK, um, it's again. Although the chocolate is a little bit better. What is it about the candy and Halloween that makes everybody smile? I think it's really about communities and neighbors connecting with one another. And I really do think that the grown-ups of the world see the delight it brings children. I was in for a treat as I would get to learn how to make the candy with Ferrara's chief marketing officer, Greg Gadotti. What is candy corn? Because I've always thought it's just basically sweetened colored wax. Candy corn is essentially sugar. Yes. And corn syrup and water. Right. And we put it into a mold and then we take it out of it uh -huh. and we polish it within a pan. And while I won't sugarcoat my dislike of candy corn. I can't stand candy corn. I, I think it's the, the candy of the devil. Greg looks at the sweet side. What's amazing about candy corn is like, it's so polarizing. So many people love it best and people hate it. Yeah. And it's all okay because everybody, everybody talks about it. Including candy corn, Ferrara makes 50 million pounds of candy a year just for Halloween. This particular plant in Itasca, Illinois, produces almost 88 million pounds of nerds and sweet tart candies annually. This is the sweet tart rope. It's a fruity licorice that's surrounded around a fondant. It's a football field long. 
And now it's my turn to get hands on. Today we're going to have you help make the birds shiny. Make the break. Make shiny. So you're going to pour on. You're going to pour in the polish. Just throw it in there. Just throw the whole just thing in. Not, just, not, not the cup. Not the cup. Everything, everything, everything in the cup. Everything in the cup in there. And then we you go. obviously are talking to my producer because you know, I'm very <laughs> literal like that. Okay, I'll let you do okay, that. Okay, all right, here we go. It'll go six hours. Six it essentially, hours. it starts all with a, a single sugar crystal uh -huh. and then continues to build be, to make these perfectly imperfect shapes. Then we load the cartons onto the machine for packaging. And I want to pull this from here yep. like that. Whoop. Go! Become little nerds! That's the completed box of nerds. Wow. And, and what's she doing over there? Uh, I think she's doing some other packaging over there. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Hi, good to see you. How, what, what, what's coming out of that vent? So that's some of our HVAC systems to keep the air circulating. Yeah, that's really nice. And then how many, what's in those, those that, that thing those right there? Those are pallets of, of packaging that we put the packaging in. Yeah, that's great. Well, Greg, listen, it's been fantastic. That's great. So great. good to see you. Good you to just, you. just wait there. I'm just going to uh, run. OK. Wait. What an absolute treat. Thanks so much, Al Roker. And coming up after the break, we're gonna take a look at a growing cultural celebration that shares its roots with Halloween. Good morning, Al. Good morning, welcome to today. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We need to pull up one extra chair at the table. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day, we start our morning so you can take on yours. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. The general election is right around the corner. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about, and you'll instantly get voting rules. See the next big deadline, learn how to take action for your plan, and even help others make their plans. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for November. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now, celebrated in the days after Halloween, Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead, is a two-day holiday that reunites the living with those that have passed. And the celebration dates back some 3,000 years. It has evolved into a lot of different celebrations all over the world. And we headed to San Antonio to check out the Dia de los Muertos Hemisphere, which is an event that some say is becoming the capital of Day of the Dead celebrations here in the United States. I think that'll be good, right? Right there? Yeah, and then when we're in the actual space, we'll figure out how much louder it needs to be. But it's it's more of a symbol right. than anything. When I think about my mom, I think about like how empathetic she was. It really influenced her work and like her activism. It really shows how much she cared about people, especially marginalized people. Maria Ibarra was an artist in the San Antonio Chicano theater community, someone that gave voice to the voiceless. She was also very strong. I mean, she had cancer three times, and each time she never showed weakness. She always wanted to be strong, always worried about everybody else except herself. Last October, at the age of 45, Maria passed away. What I miss about um, Maria is I call her a uh, comadre, and in you know the Mexican culture, that's like co-mother, but it's like another woman who you're sharing your family, your life with. And so it's like the, really the everyday things. That pain of missing Maria motivated her friends and family to honor her with an altar at the San Antonio Dia de los Muertos Hemisphere. Dia de los Muertos, it is a, a Mexican and here in San Antonio, Mexican-American cultural event. It felt like that is a place where we can honor our people. I'm doing it because I know she would want it done and she would have done it for me. This was her tradition. And so th that's why we wanted to do this. 
a tradition that dates back centuries and has been growing in popularity here in the United States over the last 50 years. Many people will say that Dia de los Muertos is thousands of years old, and in some sense that's correct. So well before Spain ever came to the Americas and colonized the Americas, uh, indigenous peoples of Mesoamerica, what is today modern day Central America and Mexico, had rituals for the dead, where they would take time out of their year in order to honor their ancestors by making offerings. Dr. Matthew Sandoval has been studying, researching, and teaching about how all the elements of this holiday have made their way into popular culture. The more popular that Dia de los Muertos has gotten in Mexico, it's allowed other people across the globe to understand what this is, see what it is, and try and institute it for themselves. So now Day of the Dead is celebrated in Virginia. It's celebrated in Oregon. It's celebrated in Iowa, places where it had never existed before. Part of it has to do with, I think, people looking for ways to honor the dead, deal with death, deal with loss. The altar, or ofrendas, are the staple of this holiday, built with objects that honor lost loved ones. So some of the altars are very immersive. Many of the altars now are like multimedia installations, so there will be video embedded or music embedded into the altar, because the altar is not just a little table anymore, it becomes like an activated ritual space. Every year, what's happened in the past 12 months, good and bad, is reflected in the altars. Jim Mendiola is the artistic director of San Antonio's annual celebration. I expect to see some altars about the Uvalde shootings. I expect to see an altar about the 53 migrants who died, you know, five miles from here. But, you know, I'm also going to see families that I've first saw ten, five, two years ago that are coming back and doing new altars. So the stories are always great. That's probably the best thing about it. The stories, I can't ever get tired of hearing those. The stories that connect the living with the dead. I hope people feel when they see her altar a connection because I, I know everybody has lost someone. I hope they feel her story. I'm hoping that young brown people will be excited when they see that, that she was someone who was do-it-yourself and that they will be empowered to like do it themselves in their lives. I think it's important too that while we're, we're also remembering our people, we, have, we also have to root for them in whatever journey that they, they have going on now because we don't, we don't know what it is. We don't know what kind of challenges might exist for them in, in this other world that they now exist in. Um, so Dia de los Muertos too, I think, is a really great way for us to check in and say like, hey, we're still really rooting for you. And what a beautiful way to honor your family and also your community, right? Well, thank you so much for joining us at our Today All Day Inside Halloween special. I'm Gotti Schwartz. And from all of us here at Today All Day, have a happy Halloween.
And a big hello to all you out there watching today all day. We've got a spectacular Halloween themed episode of Pop Start Plus for you today. So let's get to the fun that we've got on tap. Coming up, we're going to take a look back at the beloved movie Halloween Town with one of its stars. Plus, Kyle Richards on the returning to the Halloween franchise 43 years after her role in that original horror classic. And then later, Tamara Morley Housley. She's reflecting on filming another popular Halloween film, Twitches. But first, our buddy Chris Witherspoon, founder and CEO of Pop Viewers, has some must see movies to catch up on this Halloween weekend. It's finally spooky season, y'all. Boo! The temperature has dropped, leaves are falling, and pumpkin spice everything is a back. But nothing gets you in the fall mood quite like a scary movie. So fear not, I'm here with your hollow weekend watch list. Let's get into it. Okay, you guys, there's pretty much no such thing as October without... Ready for this, you guys? The Halloween franchise. This year it's back with its final installment, Halloween Ends, from NBC's parent company, NBC Universal. Now, of course, Jamie Lee Curtis returns as horror's final it girl, Lori Strode, and the film picks up four years after her last encounter with this dude right here, Michael Myers. After nearly 45 years, Lori and Myers will be battling it out for the very last time, and the big question is, Who's gonna be the last man or the last woman standing? If anyone's taking bets, you guys, my money is on Lori because Miss Jamie Lee looks like she's been preparing her whole career for this kill. Halloween Ends is out in theaters now. I know I'll be seeing it soon. Now, if you have a fear of clowns, beware this next pick. Here's a clue. Here we go. <laughs> you guessed it, the movie's it, and it takes place in Derry, Maine, where a young boy, Georgie, has gone missing. Who could forget the scene by the sewer drain where little Georgie says, I'm not supposed to take stuff from strangers. And then he goes missing. Georgie's brother believes that he may still be alive and he recruits his friends to help him investigate and eventually defeat Pennywise, the creepy clown. Now, I don't know about y'all, but after this movie, I'll, oh, oh my God, I'll never be able to look at a red balloon the same again. Hmm, did that get your attention? Who could forget the infamous hypnotizing scene in Get Out from NBC's parent company, NBC Universal? When Chris is forced into the sunken place by the sound of that stirring teacup, I am still creeped out by that scene, and I can't stir a teacup anymore without thinking about it. Jordan Peele's Get Out is a psychological horror that is pretty much unlike anything you've ever seen. It tackles racism, trauma, and double consciousness, and it's all around creepy. If you're hoping to get shook and spooked, and take in a modern horror classic, definitely get into Get Out. All right, you guys, so we can't talk about Get Out without talking about us from NBC's parent company, NBC Universal. It has some of us looking at scissors in a whole new light. Now, Us is about doppelgangers known as the Tethered attempting to take over the world by killing their lookalikes. They were a part of a failed government experiment to control all citizens. Lupita Nyong'o slayed pun intended, her role as Adelaide and her tethered red. Now you guys, get this, Jordan Peele himself said that he wanted scissors to be more than an iconic piece of horror imagery. In the film, they represent duality and the idea of having two sides within yourself. Brilliant, right? Let's get into the Scream franchise next. That creepy mask has become a Halloween staple all over the world. Oh, one minute, I think I'm getting a phone call. Hello? What's your favorite scary? Nope, not today. If you got a call from a creepy stranger on Halloween, would you guys stay on the phone? Drew Barrymore did in the OG Scream movie, and we all saw how that turned out. In the latest installment featuring Jenna Ortega, a new killer has donned the ghost face mask 25 years later and has targeted a group of teenagers. Be sure to add all five Scream movies to your watch list if you really want to get into a spooky mood. Just remember, make sure your curtains are closed, your doors are locked, and your landline phones are unplugged if you actually have one. Now let's wrap things up on a lighter note. Who didn't fall in love with Tyler Perry's Medea when she first popped up? But in Boo, a Medea Halloween, we get to see a bit of a different side to her. She spends a haunted Halloween fighting off all sorts of killers and ghosts and using her purse as a weapon. Listen, I learned a thing or two from Medea and that is how to fight someone off with your purse. Okay. <laughs> While it has a couple of jump scares, I promise you, Tyler Perry still brings the laughs as only he can with Boo and its sequel, Boo 2. All right, today, all day fam, I gave you a bunch of Halloween homework. Now grab yourself a blanket, a pumpkin spice, a latte, curl up on the couch, and be prepared to be scared, but hopefully not too scared. Oh, 
Another caller. Hello. Who is this? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Well, that was super fun. I'm adding a few of those movies to my list right now for sure. Big thanks to Chris for handling those props perfectly. By the way, we should mention that you can download that Pop Viewers app easily from the App Store. Coming up, we're going to go to Halloween Town with the film star next. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The general election is right around the corner. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about, and you'll instantly get voting rules. See the next big deadline, learn how to take action for your plan, and even help others make their plans. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for November. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding this is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Uh, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. And we're back here on Pop Star Plus. Certain movies are just tied to Halloween, aren't they? One of those is Halloween Town. The beloved film featured Debbie Reynolds as a witch and grandmother to Marnie, played by Kimberly J. Brown. Kimberly spoke to our own Donna Farazan for our flashback series about her memories from the set. Kimberly, I feel like I'm living out a fall play date right now. <laughs> My childhood play dates were watching you. I'm thinking about the Disney Channel voiceover, Halloween Town, starring Kimberly J. Brown and Debbie Reynolds. Take me back to a little bit of that time when you were younger. When you auditioned for this role of Marnie, you starred in the first Halloween Town when you were 13. What was the process like auditioning at that young age and then getting the role? I think I did two rounds of auditions. I just loved Marnie so much. She was so courageous and determined. I really admired her in a way. If that's possible with characters. And I was so excited when I found out that I had gotten it. Roles like that didn't come along all the time, like to be able to kind of play a you know, teenage witch, really. I feel like it's almost more common than it was back then. I was thrilled. You say you admire her. How would you describe Marnie's character? I think Marnie, you know, she was trying to figure out who she was at 13. Okay, I'm practically a grown up. I'm certainly old enough to make my own choices. She had so much courage and determination and really took a lot of risks and just kept moving forward without even being sure of like what was gonna happen next. And so many young girls look up to her then, but also now people are starting to watch this movie for the first time. How does that make you feel not only knowing that you know, it's sort of become a Halloween cult classic, but also garnering this new demographic of fans, too. All aboard for the Marvel world! It's incredible. It really blows my mind. I meet multiple generations of fans. I meet grandma and her daughter and then her young daughter who are all watching it. It's just amazing. It's gone way beyond our wildest expectations when we first shot the first one. I'm so grateful to the fans because they have really just given it this whole life and over social media and now with Disney Plus, young kids are watching it. So it's really just incredible. I'm so honored that people still love it. This is Halloween Town, just like the book. Uh, or maybe we fell asleep on the bus. Yeah, that's it. It's all a dream. Decorations, the goblins, the witches, the ghosts. And Grandma, she was a dream too. I love that you mentioned that this movie is for all different generations, from the grandmother to the mother to the daughter. And I feel that that's what was echoed on screen as well with you, with Judith, with Debbie Reynolds. What was that relationship like to work with the legendary Debbie Reynolds? That is pretty incredible. And also at such a young age, was there anything that 
she caught you or said that sort of shaped you? Oh, absolutely. And that's the way they use their magic. She was just incredibly kind and treated all of us kids as peers right from the very start. She looked out for every actor, every crew member on set. She loved telling stories and jokes about her life and making you laugh at her expense was always one of her favorite things. But over the years, I think Marnie and Aggie's relationship very much mirrored what Kimberly and, and Debbie's relationship was. And there's so much of just getting to be around such a legend and just such an amazing human being that will just always stay with me. Was there a specific scene you remember being sort of the most awestruck by? I think in the first Halloween Town, flying on the broom with Debbie was a really special scene and day for me. It was our last day of shooting and it was, we spent the entire afternoon up on a big stool in front of a blue screen. And that was like my first day of just one-on-one -on -one time with her. And so it was so special for that reason, but it was so exciting to, to see it afterwards and go, oh my gosh, look, we look like we're flying. Hi guys. Okay, now I have to get to the good stuff. Can you tell me a little bit about your love story with your fiance, Daniel Kuntz, and just what is in the secret sauce of former <laughs> co-stars who then meet up later in life and get together? It's completely unexpected. Um, people ask us like, oh, well, you know, you must have known something while you're filming or had some, you know, had crushes or something. And that was absolutely not the case. Your only power was the power to keep us apart, Cal. And now, you don't have that power anymore. I think it had been at least 10 or 15 years since we had seen each other. We had stayed social media friends for a bit, and I was filming some new sketches for my YouTube channel. Were we dating during Halloween Town 2? <laughs> and that is a big uh, no. Yeah. Um, because, <laughs> for many reasons, but that was a long time ago. I thought it would be fun to have come have him do some because the fans, you know, would love it. And so I reached out and we ended up getting together and, and catching up. And just through the course of that kind of started realizing we started getting feelings for each other. And it was like, oh, wow, this is unexpected. When we finally went public with it, it was it's been so fun over the years just to watch all the fans reactions. Most of them warned me, you know, to continue to hide my spell book and, you know, that he's, he probably is, you know, there's probably something else going on. It's been so much fun to, uh, to, you know, see the, the fans' reactions to it all. I think that Halloween at your guys' house would be awesome. It's definitely extra special holiday now, considering uh, just our lives, our relationship, everything. It's amazing how it's all come together that, um, is it, no, I was gonna say art imitated life. I guess it's life imitating art in a sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you hope that people take away from the movie and from the spirit of Halloween? I hope that they take away that embracing yourself is so much more important than what other people think. I think that was always the common message throughout all the Halloween Town movies. And that is the the great magical aspect of Halloween Town in the sense that they celebrate Halloween. It's Halloween every day, but also everybody is, is loved and cherished for exactly who they are. And I think that's why Marnie takes to it so quickly and all of the Cromwell kids do. But I think that's just so important, especially now that kids and even adults, you know, that we all get reminded yeah. of that. We can all use a little bit of Marnie's spirit. Absolutely. Thanks, kids. See you in the afterlife. Thanks to Kimberly for chatting with us. And coming up, Kyle Richards on the return to the iconic Halloween franchise. Hey, I'm Hallie. It's good to be with you tonight. There's another legal filing today, and I want to cut through some of the weedsy stuff. And let's just, like, get to the point. They have started to vote on the PACT Act. If you're like, Hallie, stop speaking Washingtonese. This bill would basically give health care to veterans who have exposed to these toxic chemicals. Just got, I'm trying to make this as not D.C. as possible. The increased sort of anger that we've seen now in politics. I saw you searching for, I think, your microphone, Danny. You are out. I was you trying to do it on the slide. Live TV, man. It's okay. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcast now to subscribe. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. 
lighten your load every single morning. The general election is right around the corner. If you have voting questions, we have voting answers. Head to NBCNews.com slash plan your vote. You'll find voter registration deadlines, early voting dates, vote by mail information, and so much more. Because some of the rules have changed since 2020. And now's the time to start planning for your November vote. What's the state of the United States? That is up to you. On your mark, get set, plan your vote. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Welcome back to our special Halloween-themed edition of Popstar Plus. As a child actress, Kyle Richards rose to fame through her appearances in Little House on the Prairie and the film Halloween, where she starred as a young Lindsay Wallace at just eight years old. Now more than 40 years later, Richards has returned in Halloween Ends, the 13th and final installment in the franchise. Here's Donna's conversation with her. I am so excited to be sitting down with Kyle Richards, who is reprising her role in the new movie, Halloween Ends. I was certain that I saw him watching me. For those who don't know much about Halloween, how would you describe Halloween Ends? I really enjoyed the story behind Halloween Ends and where they decided to take it. It's really exciting, and the acting was really incredible. I, th I, I thought everybody did an amazing job. I'm actually so excited for this, which is out of character for me, but I've watched all of the Halloween movies. Uh, they're not, they can be scary, but they're not too crazy scary. I think they're really scary. Okay. I mean, even as a little girl, I wasn't scared making the movie, but I'm scared when I see the movie and I see myself in that situation. So you are playing Lindsay Wallace, which you've played multiple times over the series. What is it about the character and about the series that makes you want to come back? Well, I, you know, I'm just so grateful to be a part of this franchise for all of these decades, mm -hmm. starting out as a little girl. And over these years, my relationship with Jamie has grown and we've become closer. So to be able to play these characters together all of these years later is just something that, you know, I'm so appreciative of. Your daughters and your husband, Mauricio, have a new reality show coming out soon. Is there anything you could tell us about it? It's called Buying Beverly Hills on Netflix, and here the girls grew up on the show with me, but they've never been like one to be front and center. And it was very funny seeing my daughters, you know, coming through my closets, you know, <laughs> grabbing outfits. I'm like, the whole show is gonna be things I've worn on the Housewives. And obviously I've learned a lot after doing a reality show this many years. I just kept telling my daughters, never say anything you don't want to say or anything you don't mean you know don't ever get pushed into something that you're not comfortable with stand your ground no matter what before we wrap up I just want to know how how do you spend Halloween well my eldest daughter Farah is born on Halloween so we've always made a big deal about Halloween every year and we always did a huge party as she got older called Farrowween um, but the last one we did for her really did me in so like the past couple years I've had to take a break so now it's just decorating my house. I just envision you always give out the king size bars. You know, that's what I envision your house. house. <laughs> if they were to come, that's nobody, what would happen. Because of, yeah, they, nobody comes to my house, which is also sad. So then I have to go somewhere because I like to see all, you know, the I know, so, I know. You know, I, I wear like the typical mom outfit, which is like cat ears and like mm -hmm. a cat suit and go to dinner. <laughs> I mean, it's I so wear like, that too. It's just like going to the like door, a little get sexy. Your little cat ears. Yeah. Just add cat ears to this and you're good to yeah, go. There you go. See, that's probably what I'll be wearing <laughs> on Halloween. Always great to hear from Kyle. We should mention Halloween ends is in theaters and it'll stream on Peacock. Coming up next, Tamara Mori Housley on the movie Twitches. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> 
for breaking news in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight and expert analysis. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Pop Star Plus. Many fell in love with Tamara Maury Housley when she started in the hit show Sister Sister with her twin Tia. The two went on to star in a few films together, including a Halloween classic, Twitches. Donna Farazan is back, catching up with Tamara, who calls the film one of her favorite experiences. Take a look. Okay, Tamara, I'm so excited to chat with you because I feel like I grew up with you. And I was re-watching Twitches last night. And you know when you re-watch something from your childhood? Yes. And it it's not as good. Back. Yeah, but, or yeah, it's not as good one or it brings you back, yes. But Twitches is still good. No, it's still, it's still good. good. It's still good. And your acting was so good in it. Um, but I forgot about the go Twitches, go Twitches. I have to tell you, yes, so I have to tell you something. T and I made that up. That was an improv. And we were so like shocked and just surprised with happiness that that's what stuck. My sister and I looked at each other, the lame, we did, you know, like something like this in there. And then also the go twitches, go twitches. And then we we would pause for a little bit. It's your birthday, it's your birthday. Yeah, we made that up on the fly. Go twitches, go twitches. It's a birthday, it's a birthday. <laughs> Wow, that is called true talent. When you can oh, make you. <laughs> like that, when you make something like that stick, and then it still resonates twenty no. years later. Twenty can years. Can you believe that it's twenty Wait. years later? By the way, really? Uh, yeah. What? It's amazing that people. Yes, they still love that movie, and it became like a Halloween classic. It did become a Halloween classic. I mean, can you take me back to that time when you and Tia found out you got the roles, you got the parts of Alex and Cameron? What was that like? It was amazing. So first of all, our agent told us that, you know, Disney Channel, uh, hello. I mean, we grew up on the decom too. You know, it was like Disney Channel, like uh, movies were uh, just- They were everything. Everything. And so many people watched them. 21, over 20 million people watched this film in two days. 23 million. You just don't hear those numbers. Like, no, I was just it, gonna say, it's like a Super Bowl. Pretty much, right? We were so happy. And I have to say, shooting Twitches was one of my favorite experiences in my entire life. Playing Cameron was so much fun. And I was just talking about how they just let me go. Like we had free range. I could be silly. One of my favorite moments are in the first one when we're, you know, talking to our protectors and I'm like, huh? Like I literally, I was, <laughs> I was really delirious that day. And I was like, whatever. I didn't know, you know, it's like the camera's rolling, but it's not. And I was just my goofy self. Wait, you called yourselves our protectors. Shh. What are you protecting us from? Just go ahead and tell them. The darkness. Eh? The darkness. They kept it in. It's it was it was great. I look back and I'm like, you could see I, we were just having fun, and we had so much fun just pointing our fingers, and you know, thinking we were really witches and we were magical. That even after, I swear, this happened to us. We were at a stoplight. And we're like, don't you wish you can just like, <laughs> like just <laughs> point at it? Let's try and Let's tell me it worked. No, it didn't. It didn't. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> but I mean. That is so awesome that you say, because you've done so much and continue to do so much in your career, sure. that yeah. that Twitches was one of your favorite experiences, if not the most favorite. I mean, it was the 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 magic of it all. 
Um, doing something with special effects is something that I've always wanted to do. You know, working with my sister, we just had, we had so much fun. Like when we're together, it is, um, we don't have to try. It just works. It's kind of magical. So maybe, you know, the, the chemistry, the natural chemistry that we have, and then doing a magical film, it just, it worked and there was comedy in it. And comedy is like, I, I, I just love comedy. It, it, it's just so much fun. And by the way, I do think something to note is that because you brought yourself and your personality into your characters, people feel closer to you. And therefore, all these other opportunities that you've been given um, have been really natural. Um, when you hosted The Real, now coming out with your debut memoir, which I have right here. <laughs> So exciting. I wonder, what is your advice for not allowing the critics to really diminish anyone's light or, or thwart, thwart anyone from, you know, achieving what they want to achieve? So fortunately and unfortunately, <laughs> I can really talk on this issue. Um, and I have learned a lot about myself. And, uh, but the most important, thing is I have overcome it. So one, I would say you can overcome it. One, know that you're not alone. It's very hard not to take this, you know, um, personal, but the reality is, is they do this to everybody. Everybody is going to have a critic. It is, it is the way of life. But the main thing you have to do is really fight it. Okay, so the thing is, Tamara, you and I both clearly love deep conversations. Yeah. And I could go on for hours <laughs> asking okay. you all these philosophical and deep okay. life, um, which is why people just need to get your book. Mm -hmm. But I do want to end, um, just, it's Halloween time, yeah. and I do want to end with a little Twitches quiz. Can we try doing this? Oh my it's gosh, it was over fun. 20 years ago, but let's do it. <laughs> I know, but that's why it's funny. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm going to quiz you on some aspects of the movie. It's okay. understandable if you don't get them. Oh, God. What, what is the name of the kingdom where the twins were born? Coventry. Hey. <laughs> what are the names of the guardians who protected Alex and Cameron? Aw, oh, damn. Can you give me a hint? Just the name of each yeah. one? Um, one of them rhymes with harsh. Okay. The other one uh, rhymes with million. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't remember. Karsh and Ileana. Yes! <laughs> Where were the twins when they discovered they can make their magic stronger by holding hands? Oh darn it, because we there were certain moments where we were shopping or, uh, oh lord, we were in a car. Um, yeah, no, that's right. You were right. in a car. car. Yeah. Yes, you were, we were right. in a car. In Canada, and all of a sudden, we were like flying yeah. up on a, uh, a building. Yes, good okay. job. Okay. Good job. Okay. Uh, what did the twins discover was the opposite of darkness? Love. Yes. Yes, the love for each other. Love. <laughs> do your kids watch Twitches? Like, yes, is this, that's they do. so fun. They absolutely loved it. Araya watched it just a little bit earlier than she should. She was so afraid of the darkness. Whereas I look at, I'm like, girl, it's just like cartoon smoke. <laughs> but it's also funny. It's the sound. It's yeah. the sound. The sound is, is very, very creepy. But they love Twitches. And I still love Twitches. I love, I want there to be a Twitches 3. I would love that. My sister and I would actually do one. I would love to. Love, love, love. Did everyone hear that? Everyone hear that? We're getting a Twitches 3. <laughs> You're up to me. <laughs> well, there you go. That would be fun to see another Twitches film. By the way, Tamara's memoir, You Should Sit Down For This, is in stores now and available online. All right, I think you're all ready for Halloween, so spend the weekend watching all those scary movies, and don't forget to tune in to today, our big show, Monday morning, the big Halloween extravaganza and costume reveals. We're betting this year's show is gonna be one of our best ever. So until then, have a great weekend, be safe, and we'll see you Monday.
Welcome back. Time for a Halloween themed cheat day Friday. Mm -hmm. We've got today nutrition's Joy Bauer with two festive recipes that will make you scream. Hey guys, I'm here in my quarantine makeshift witch outfit that my mom made for me. And we are making two creepy creations, starting with deviled eyeballs, which are my healthier take on deviled eggs. Here I have hard boiled eggs that I peeled. I sliced them in half and I popped out the yolk. I have two bags here. This one is filled with hummus and this one is filled with guac and both are super heart healthy. So I'm putting in my hummus and now I'm gonna put in my guac that gives it a nice green monster look. Now we need the pupils. I've got little olive slices. Olives are another heart healthy food. And I also have green olives. If your kids don't like olives, you could also put a little round cereal in there. Now I like to put in either a little pimento that came with the green olives, or you can chop up red bell peppers. Now we need to make these eyes bloodshot. So here I have sriracha sauce. Now you may be thinking, what happens if I want the bloodshot eyes, but I don't love heat? All you do is you take some light mayonnaise and some rich, thick tomato paste, no sugar added. You get that color that you want and get going with those bloodshot lines. Because we popped out the yolk, and normally the yolk is mixed with mayonnaise for a deviled egg filling, these are less than half the calories, but best part, they are filled with heart healthy goodness. These eyeballs are a great Halloween appetizer. Now it's time for dessert. Caramel apple mummies. Now typically caramel sauces are all sugar, but not this one. I'm adding dates. They are packed with antioxidants and fiber and vitamins and minerals. Next our sweetener, some maple syrup, a nice neutral oil. This is grapeseed oil, heart healthy, unsaturated, vanilla extract, and maple extract, and a little bit of kosher salt. Put the top on here. So here we have our apple slices. Keep the skin on for extra fiber. The first thing we need are chocolate eyes. So I have dark chocolate chips or semi-sweet chocolate chips. And now the caramel sauce. And we shall start to mummify. Just creating zigzags. And the cool part is your kids will never know that they're eating dates. Look at these mouth-watering mummies. And for all the adults who are looking for something boozy and bewitched, Head over to Instagram because I'm gonna show you how to make the ultimate witch's brew, AKA apple cider sangria. Wishing everybody a happy, safe, and healthy Halloween. Mwah. She might be the Enjoy. first person who's ever wished me a healthy Halloween. Go. <laughs> My God, no one has ever said that before. And you know thinking, no, because no, no. No one ever said that ever. <laughs> <laughs> we thank you, Joy. And you can find those recipes at today.com slash food. Oh, I love that music. Now to our series, Hackaween, to help you make the most of this weekend's festivities. And if you need some quick party food ideas, TikTok may be the place people are turning for inspiration. And TikTok's the spot to go, but instead of just scouring thousands of videos, how about this? Our friend and former Today Food stylist, Ashley Holt. Yes. She's done the work for you. Ashley's one of our brilliant bakers, uh, battling it out in a friendly competition on Netflix's hit show. It's called Bake, Bake Squad. Squad. Remember when you were just here and now you're huge and famous? I'm Netflix. Stop. Welcome Stop. back. Thank you. It is so, it's crazy to be back here. It's well, fun. fun. So these are all from TikTok. I love that. Yeah, yeah, TikTok is a place that everyone's going now for some quick inspiration, easy to execute treats, and today we have some of the most popular ones that are out there on the web. Okay, this skull okay. looks a little intimidating. It's and this gorgeous, is your, but these are skull is cupcakes. This your TikTok? Watch out! Look at this. Look at the TikTok. Yeah, so this one is look mine. Um, in my look. world, you can't have a party without cake, yeah, and because true. of COVID, people are gearing more towards look. like single serve items. Yeah. So look this is a cupcake. It. I love watching how you I create. Know. This. I like can't stop watching it too. Look. <laughs> Thank you. So this is a cupcake cake. It's actually a tearaway cake. And I like as I do everything, I go a little extra with it. But yeah. you did. <laughs> I went a little extra here. But you can really put it in any design you want, even if you want to do a simple like sheet. Like ghost. a pumpkin or a pumpkin. So yeah. all you did was you put down a bunch of mini cupcakes and then put a whole bunch of icing over it and yeah, did the exactly. decorations. Yeah, and it's and, and like we could do a little smiley. Card. 
Yep, exactly. Just get a few different colors of frosting and um, a variety of piping tips and just have fun with it. You is don't have to go elaborate. Is this fun? That's buttercream. Buttercream. Okay, nice, yummy. Hoda. Look at you go. Thank you. Well, you yeah, know. Hoda, you could be a decorator. Mm. This is beautiful. You finished it here. <gasps> okay, this okay. is something we really could do. Okay, okay. Let's, let's watch the TikTok as you're telling us about yeah, it. Yeah, so but. pretzels and white chocolate. It doesn't get any easier than that. You arrange, if you want to come over here and oh, try okay. it. Um, you arrange your pretzels in a little star shape. Okay. Let me snip this back okay, for you. Okay, got it. And, and then, uh, yeah, you just what's in the middle? Go in what's circles. This? White what's chocolate. This blob? White chocolate to hold everything Warm together. Yeah. And what's in here? Warm white chocolate. chocolate. Oh, this is white chocolate. I'm so tempted to go like just down I know, the throat. But I'm not you can't. So you, know, you it's just your go dessert. around in a circle. You just go around in a circle. Oh. A light touch. I mean, oh, cut no. your hole oh, a little no. too big. Oh, oh no. Hey, know. you know what? Every spider web is unique. Okay. And just put a couple eyeballs on it and oh, put no eyeballs one will in. see it. And are these the... eyeballs candy? They're candy eyeballs Where do you, you get, get at your local at the craft store? store. Okay. Yeah, and let, the, let it sit up until the chocolate's firm and you lift it up and you have your firm. Yeah, these spider okay. webs. That's cute. cute. Now, I love this charcuterie board. Spook. Char spookery board. Char it's a mouthful. Sure okay, is. let's see how they how you Yeah, it. this has been one of the most popular Look things I've seen this Wait, season. Oh. These little skeletons are super inexpensive. The Shudo is like the, it's like the muscles. I know. Ew. It's a little it's a little gross, but, but it's cool. like gruesome. I know, it's Halloween. You gotta have fun with it. I Look love a good that. themed dessert. Some brie cheese. Adorable. Yeah, and charcuterie boards are very easy to put together. Just a bunch, it's all about layering your colors and your texture. Just never stop layering. It's brilliant. So brilliant. Okay. I, by the way, that's brilliant. All right, what's what this about one? a dessert board? We like a sweet treat. Okay, yeah. so just like the savory char spookery board, this is Look a sweet this. version. Again, Put it in any sort of configuration that your heart desires and just go shopping for candy that fits what you're looking for. So with I the am skull, so mesmerized by these TikToks. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I know. It's hard, hard to turn away. Yeah, it's hard to turn away. Do you notice that this is a skull? Yeah, How creative yeah. is that? Oh, yeah, it's cute, right? That's so and You can make cute. this ahead of time. And if you're going somewhere, like any the more delicate items, like the jelly beans, just get a little dab of frosting and put it on the so bottom. They, so so, so they that you set. can carry it with That's you. That's fun yeah. for a party. Keep it from okay. moving around. Okay, uh -oh. okay ladies, what you do this is what we come here for. Of the booze. Yes, we're here for the booze. Okay, wait, how do you do it? Look at the drill. Yeah, so oh. a pumpkin keg. This is a foam pumpkin, actually, that I got at Target. Yeah. And I just cut it out with an X-Acto knife, and you put the bag of wine in there. You can use a real pumpkin if you oh want. Oh, my God, I'm booze. here for the booze. It's so, so cute, right? So, wait, then you put the bag of wine in the back? Mm-hmm. Is that what you said? Okay. You do, and then you give yourself a little... Oh, a little drink. How cute! I feel like that could continue for ha for our Thanksgiving. I think. By the way, you're I right. I mean, you're gonna have to get rid of them here for the booze. Right. But you what else could you say? Switch it up. Um, <laughs> oh shoot, turkey Thanks. dinner. I have no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Thanks for the wine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you so thank much. You for the thank wine. you so all much. All right, thank you so much, and for all of these ideas, head to today.com slash food. You get one beautiful so life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. <laughs> love you too. The general election is right around the corner. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about and you'll instantly get voting rules. See the next big deadline, learn how to take action for your plan, and even help others make their plans. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for November. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. <laughs> the day's biggest political stories with trusted insight and expert analysis. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We're back with Today Food, and this morning we're focusing on making your Halloween celebrations extra special. Our lifestyle expert Sandra Lee is helping kick off the festivities with a new uh, episode of her Top Chef series on Today All Day. 
broke, uh, well, starting this morning and for the rest of the week, check out our streaming channel on today.com all day or on Peacock for our favorite recipes, decorating ideas, and spooky stories. To get things started, Sandra Lee showing us how to create a magical dessert with some sweet surprises. Hi everyone, happy Halloween. These are my Halloween magic candy brownies. These are fantastic if you are having friends over or if you just want a decadent holiday dessert. Now, they start off with just a regular brownie mix from the grocery store. But if you can't find that in your grocery store, then go ahead and just use chocolate syrup. You need a quarter of a cup. We're gonna add a couple things to these brownies that I think are gonna surprise you. We're gonna add three tablespoons of coffee or espresso. We are gonna then add three tablespoons of coffee liqueur. Now, two eggs, oil, and then very slowly blend this together. Now, my oven is already preheated to 375 degrees, and you are gonna cook these for about 40 minutes. Sometimes I will underbake these by about five minutes so that the inside of them, the middle side, is nice and moist and dense and a little gooey. That's how I like them. This is gonna be the beginning of the candy brownie. You wanna take a candy bar, I like the wafer bars, put it onto your brownie, line those up, because that's gonna actually sit on top of your candy bar. And then you're gonna go right on the side here, a little snack for me later, and down the middle. These candy bars then go onto a plate. Now, we're gonna make icing. Powdered sugar in your bowl, cream cheese, some heavy whipping cream, espresso powder, room temperature butter. Now, we're gonna put in here a little bit of vanilla, about one teaspoon, which is about a cap full. And you're gonna to wanna to mix this up again. Mm. That is gonna be great icing. Into the bag it goes. You know my little trick, plastic bag, take the corner into the glass. I'm just putting this in here to make it easier to get it on top of the brownies. We're gonna go back and forth here. That's gonna allow all that candy to kind of set on and be secured into the brownie. You wanna be very careful with that, otherwise it's gonna lift. That's why you wanna pipe it on. Now, fun part, decorating. You're gonna put on all sorts of candy. You're gonna put on maybe some chocolate chips, white milk chocolate, and butterscotch is what I have here. Magic shop. Here's the deal. You have to shake this for 20 seconds. Because we're not putting this directly on ice cream, you have to put these in the fridge to harden up. It needs to be cold. And then go back and forth. A little bit more Halloween candy. Then into the fridge, these are gonna go. They are perfect every single time. They're decadent. They're delicious. Happy Halloween. Mm. Mm. Wow. Okay. Mm. All right. Uh, Sandra Lee, thank you. You can get that recipe at today.com slash food. Here to show us how to make scary good homemade candy is food blogger and host of the digital series Hashtag Cooking, one of our favorite people, Sama Dada. Good morning to you. Hey, Sama. Good morning, guys. I miss seeing you guys we so miss much you. every day. your face. Well, you look absolutely fantastic. I always say every time I see oh. you, I feel like I need to eat cleaner. For people who don't realize, Sama <laughs> was one of our, our desk assistants mm -hmm. and, and now is this fab fabulous food blog. Now she's big time. All right, first up, you're putting Thank a grown-up spin on a childhood favorite, your salted almond butter cups. It sounds so good. So talk about how you get the chocolate nice and smooth. How do we do it? Yeah. Yeah, Chanel. So basically, growing up for Halloween, like I'm pretty sure I was only there for the peanut butter cups, like the only reason I was in existence. <laughs> so I thought I'd make it a little sophisticated, elevate it a little bit with some almond butter. So with the chocolate, I have this melted here. What I did, just with a little bit of coconut oil in the microwave in 15 second increments until it's nice and smooth and glossy. Mm -hmm. Super easy, nothing crazy required to make this. So once I do that, I've kind of got my almond butter filling next, okay? So I've got my almond butter filling. What I'm gonna do to create this is add a little bit of coconut oil and some maple syrup. So mm. oh. I will note as well, yeah. And could you use could you use another nut butter, Sama? Totally, Al. So you can totally use the peanut butter, you can use the cashew butter, a sunflower seed butter. I welcome all your nut butter journeys here. Whatever <laughs> yeah. works for you, whatever you have on hand, like that's totally great. Um, I'm just using almond butter because that's what I have and that's what I love. So 
I'm just going to stir this together so it's kind of thick. And what's cool about this, too, is that you'll notice it's kind of more like a dough, which mm -hmm. is nice because we don't want it to kind of spread too thin when we put it into our chocolate mixture, right? So now I'm just going to assemble this straight in there. I'm going to add my chocolate into my mini muffin liner. So the best part about this recipe, too, is that the only thing you really need to make it are these little mini muffin liners. Oh, Super okay. easy, no crazy equipment. And, and I'm going to give you a little tip shape, right here. Right? Exactly. They hold the shape. And I'm going to give you guys a little tip right here. So when I'm actually putting this chocolate into the liner, you want to just drag it up onto the sides of the liner mm. just so that we create a nice seal for our almond butter and it mm -hmm. feels nice and safe and enclosed in there. That's what we want. It's amazing. Put that in there. And then we're just going to add our almond butter filling straight inside. Easy enough. Once Boom. I do that, super easy. Yeah. And, and then and we're then just going to fill it with chocolate. And then you just top it with chocolate? Top it with chocolate, and then we're going to end up with something like this after we set it in the freezer for about 30 minutes. Remove it, sprinkle it with a little flaky sea salt, and you're good That's to go. All right. Now, the next one that a lot of us are very excited about, like the Nestle's crisp, <laughs> uh, you know, Crunch Bar, mm -hmm. you're going to make a crispy yes. chocolate bar. Only four ingredients. Crispy chocolate bars. Only four ingredients. Uh, we've got our chocolate, our rice crisps, some coconut oil, and maple syrup. Really easy to make, mm. even less time to set in the freezer. So all I've got here... Melted the coconut oil and chocolate the same way I did for the mm. almond butter mixture, right? In my previous recipe. And so I'm just going to mix this so it's nice and smooth. Now I'm going to add a little bit of maple syrup, just a tiny bit for like a touch of sweetness. Doesn't really need much. I'm going to stir that till it's smooth. And then all we're going to do, fold in our little rice crisps. Mix everything together so everyone is very well acquainted. Everyone's friends in here. Don't use mix cooked this rice. Well. Use crisp rice. Yeah. Yes, crisp rice. You can even use a brown rice crisp. Super easy to find. And just going to mix that in. You've got this nice little mixture here. Mm -hmm. Transfer it into your prepared pan. I've just lined this with some parchment paper. Um, super easy. I'm going to pour that straight in there. Oh my and then when you get it in there, you want to make sure it's just nice and flattened out. and Everything's yeah. very evenly distributed. Set it in the freezer 15 to 20 minutes. And then you're going to remove it for about 10 Yum. minutes and thaw it. You're good to go. Oh, that looks crunch fantastic. Bar. Sama, as always... Yes. You bring it right in. That looks amazing. I wish you were here. <laughs> I miss you guys. I miss you. Thank you so much for having me. And if you want these recipes, just head to today.com slash food. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load. Every single morning. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs> Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Good morning. Welcome to today. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Now to our series, Hackoween, and since we love a good Halloween hack, we turn to TikTok for a little inspiration. Okay, but instead of you going down the rabbit hole of those videos, we've done the work for you with the help of home and lifestyle expert Jill Bauer. Hey, Jill. Good morning. morning, Jill Bauer. It is it my is. first time meeting. Good it's morning. a pleasure. I've been, oh, my gosh. I've well, I love being afar. here, nice and I think you. you're terrific. Oh, thank so you. thank you. Like, happy, right. happy. Let, let's get started. Shall we begin at the front door? Yeah, so mm -hmm. we what we did is we looked at some of these TikTok trends yeah. that were going on okay. and tried to figure out how easy 
easy, really, is it to make these things? Okay. So I don't know if we want to start with the ghost. Let's start yeah. with the ghost. Let's start with the ghost. Yeah. Okay, so. And that is your latest weather. All right, we are almost ready to start, and I got to tell you, we've really been impressed by the folks in our Start Today community. Over the past year, it's grown to more than 110,000 members. Woo! Other to become their better selves physically and mentally and everybody's been sticking to the monthly plan we're so excited because we've had folks travel from across the country and canada to start off our walking to our start today walking challenge sponsored by easy spirit for everybody watching at home join our fun by signing up for our start today newsletter just scan the qr code on your screen or you can go to starttoday.com if you're on the east coast you can also be watching our behind the scenes walk of the entire live our, our entire walk live on our streaming channel today all day or you can follow at today show on facebook twitter and the tiktok uh, and by our side <laughs> is of course our leader stephanie Lansor, our Woo! health and fitness great walking tips how's everybody feeling This is beyond my wildest dreams, Al. I'm so excited to be here with over 200 of That's our That's right. Viewers. University of Orlando. Already, already. Yep. All right. In three, two, one. Let's walk. Start today. Here we go. All right. That's a good group. What kind of pace are we keeping here, Steph? All right. Well, we're going to do about two miles. All right. Just under an hour. This is so. a great time of the morning, but Perfect. the best part of the morning, pop start, Carson. You're welcome. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Go back to your home. <laughs> Thank you. Do you want me to hold the horn? Or? Uh, here, I'll... Hey, Kay, can you... Or, hey, can you just take the horn? We don't think we need the horn now. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Well, here we are. We're talking. Whoa, 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 whoa. We almost, almost had, hey, thank you, dude. Quick tease at the end. You'll let us know. So we're, our, our, we're streaming now. It's fantastic. We're great. Uh, Facebook, uh, uh, Twitter, the TikTok. The kids love the TikTok. How many of you are on the TikTok? All right. How many of you are lying? All right. So, uh, uh, Steph, what's the deal? What, you know, people always talk about the fact that, uh, oh, I can't get started. As a, I see everybody else walking. What do you tell people? You know, all we really need to do is just start today. If not now, Al, uh -huh. when? I yes. Mean, we're going to put it off till the new year. We're going right. to put it off till after the holidays. No, the biggest thing is to just get up, take one step at a time. Uh -huh. And once you do that, even if it's just for five minutes, we have some people that have only walked to their mailboxes and right. back. We have others that are walking walking for four miles. Oh, you know, we just walked by the Universal store. That air conditioning <laughs> felt Feels pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. <laughs> that felt darn good. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we'll have to go back in there. Uh, you know, we always hear 10,000 steps. What's the, I mean, do you have to worry about 
the number of steps? Yeah, you know, I recommend that our viewers either track steps if that's what they like, uh -huh. or just track minutes. 20 minutes a day is all they need to get started. Uh -huh. And you know, the daily recommended physical activity per week is 150 minutes a week. Right. So if we can really inch that up, you know, 20 minutes a day with the walk, count the steps, or if you don't want to count the steps, do two miles a day like what we're doing. Right. But we're, I'm really excited. I'm not going to give it away yet, Al, but for our November workout challenge, right. I'm actually giving you a full plan so that you can walk a specific distance. That's a little teaser. Oh, yeah. a specific distance. <laughs> yes. Now, do you start at a distance or do you start and build? We're starting and building up. Starting and the yep, start and yep, build. Yep. I was speaking of building. I wonder what's coming out here. There's something Ooh, uh, something at Universal. I don't know what it is, but uh, <laughs> there you go. What's your favorite Universal ride? Gringotts. All right, there you go. Ooh. Gringotts. Uh, my favorite was of all time was uh, the Back to the Future ride. Yes. So. <laughs> You're coming to a live tease. All right. Ooh, yeah, I love these teases. I, I don't have prom I don't have IFB. Oh, there we go. Okay. I actually don't either. If that matters. Yeah, it's but, back. But yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. So this Look at you walking backwards, Zach. Very really impressive. Go, Zach. Go, Zach. Go, Zach. Four minutes to get to the minions. <laughs> there you go. You guys are doing awesome. What? Everyone's Four having fun. Woo! All right, good, good. Keep smiling, pumping Smiling, arms. smiling. Yes. Oh, we're coming to the combat building. Ooh. Look at that. <laughs> it's like we never left. <laughs> we're still here. You know, in the Florida heat, it is a reward when you go back inside oh, the man. air conditioning. Oh, man, i got to tell you. That's a perk of living somewhere hot and Woo. humid. You this can't you walk in and then you go inside and it's a reward. That's right. Yes. Get that AC. Yes. Look at yes. there, NBC. We got the com Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. And the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Look at that. Oh, that's right, the Tonight Show run. Race through New York. All right. Looks like I'm working out. It's it. <laughs> got the alert. Yes. It's better than when they hit my hand and says, have you fallen? Right. <laughs> you know why they have these carts here to pace us, right? Yes. Because in, in August, we took off almost sprinting. But speed oh, yeah, little Al, different. Al style. Al style. Little different. Probably 4.5 miles Woo. an hour. Uh, this is a little bit slower. Yes, which is okay. This is in a 15-minute mile. Yes, so, which is okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Everyone's looking good. So, what, what, Stephanie, what do you say to people who are like, well, I don't know that I can, I can, I can be consistent. How and often? Commit. How often do you have? Should yes, you, be doing you know, this? for our today.com workout challenges, we, we say every single day, but we do allow rest days in mm -hmm. which we can do things like stretch, foam roll or maybe even do some strength training. But mm -hmm. typically, if someone feels intimidated by an everyday walk, yeah. then I say, okay, cut that in half. Make 50% right. your goal. So start with just three days every uh, week and, t and prove to yourself that you can do that. You right. can be consistent. Oh, we have some people beating us. Oh, yeah, look at that. They're already oh, moving. Oh, my gosh. Okay. They're moving. <laughs> now, what about if you, well, you get up in the morning and you're not feeling great? You know, yeah. like something's achy or whatever, you yes. know, do you do you push through or do you listen to your body? You know, something that is low impact is walking. I do recommend that even if you're feeling some aches and pains, you still stand up and start to walk. If those aches and pains don't go away uh -huh. after the first three or four minutes, uh -huh. then you might want to take a break for that day. Mm -hmm. But if you're starting to feel good, because oftentimes what happens, Al, is we're sleeping in the same position. Right. So we get stiff. We get tight and uh -huh. you need to like loosen up and limber up and walking is a great way to do that. And it makes you have a sense of accomplishment because you actually, okay, you didn't feel that great that morning. You woke up on the wrong side of the bed, maybe physically, but you feel yourself moving and grooving and, and feeling looser and limber. Uh -huh. So it builds your confidence to want to do it again the next time. Right. So you don't feel a hundred percent. Oh, we're on like the back we're lot now. Of people running here? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I guess we got to get to those minions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to get to the minions. All right. <laughs>
but it is very common, you know, especially we see people in our Start Today Facebook group. You guys are all in it, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. We see people. And don't forget, if you haven't joined the Start Today work, you can just go to uh, today.com, start today. Yep. And you can become part of the over 110,000 strong community. Yes, we are pushing 115,000 now. And, all right, we're going to Oh, there's up Eric from WESH, West 2. Hi, Eric. How you buddy. Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. There we go. So when you're in our Start Today community, you know, like these amazing people, you will see people post, I didn't feel like walking today. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like exercising. But I saw that Barbara or I saw Janice posted. And it motivated me to get up, put on my tennis shoes, and get outside and do my walk. Mm -hmm. So it is really encouraging to see other people that are, that, you know, have similar struggles. Hey now. <laughs> hey now. Here we go. Woo! Keep smiling. Keep going. <laughs> Woo! Woo! There, there's water, folks. Grab some water if you need it. Woo! Grab some water. You gotta Woo! step back a Keep little. <laughs> Somebody keeps walking on the back of my foot. <laughs> Out of your weather. Okay. Uh, not here. I lost IFB. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. I'll hang your out. I'll scoot over so you can okay. get in. Okay. Whoops. Sorry. No, no. No. Should I get them, the ladies behind us or not? Yeah, probably. Hey, ladies. Hey, ladies. Watch careful, Kate. Yes. <laughs> get ready. Get ready. Smile. To be honest, I have no idea about fantasy football. <laughs> Brady Reese, the son of one of our producers, does this for me because I have no clue, none whatsoever. But what I do have a little bit of a clue about is the weather. Let's show you what we've got going on. Uh, for today, we are looking at uh, sunshine in the northeast. We're looking at sunny skies down through the Gulf, some strong storms down south, wet weather making its way into the Pacific Northwest. Then, as we move on into tomorrow, we are looking at more fantastic weather down through the Gulf, unseasonably warm through the plains, and more wintry mix as we get out into the Pacific Northwest. That's what's going on around the country. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Woo! You've got the two local affiliates. Yep. We're eventually going to walk into the Minions, which we're supposed to be now, but okay. we're a little behind. And um, in the West Reporter, and then you take us to break. Okay, is that, it, it's not this is today, it's just... No, uh, he doesn't have to say this is today, right? Yes, you do, this okay. is today. Ten seconds. Guys, clear the set, please. Nine. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Get ready, guys. Get ready. Smile. Get ready. Smile. latest weather. We are still making our way through Universal Studios with all of our friends here uh, at our Start Today Walking uh, Club. Uh, don't forget, check out the QR code. You can join up. Hey, also, check out our good friend Grant Johnston from NBC5, Dallas-Fort Worth. He's getting his steps in right now with his friends. There you go. Uh, morning anchor Michelle Redford, uh, Relaford, along with traffic reporter Kyle. Uh, okay, you're going. Get going, Grant. Get going. <laughs> All right, now let's head on down to Chicago. Let's head to Chicago. That's it. Morning anchor Michelle Relaford, along with traffic reporter Kai Martin from NBC5 in Chicago, keeping up the pace all along the lakefront. There you go. You guys are looking good. Uh, and by the way, where's Eric? Eric Burris right here. Eric Burris, first warning meteorologist. Our friends here at the hometown station, West 2, here in Orlando. Having a good time? A great time. You look fantastic. You all look fantastic. You're all doing a great job. All right, we're going to head back to New York, and we're going to keep walking. Don't forget, you can go to today.com, uh, today, all day, all that. Check us out live as we're streaming.
But first, this is today on NBC. Great job, Al. Great job. <laughs> the professional. How fun was that? The minions? Oh, yeah. All right, it's your guys' segment now. Okay. Guys, it's the main segment now. Next Whatever up, intro to spot. Okay. And now the spot's 45 seconds. Okay. The whole segment. Everyone's involved with this. Yep. Everyone's All right. remind you, push that QR code newsletter. Right, sign right. Uh, okay, hey guys, stay, stay behind us. This is when we pump, okay? Okay. Guys, this is when we all pump arms up when you see us, okay? Thanks. We keep moving for That's this right. segment. Okay, yep. yeah, I just want to make sure. <laughs> all right, so this is when we smile. This is going to be like five hey, minutes, all eyes hey, on you guys. Just a second. Let me just... Uh... Slow down just a little. Slow down just a little. Keep up. Let's keep walking, guys. Okay, hold on. All right. All right. One minute to us. Okay. Savannah tosses two out. Okay. Uh, We're going this way, I'm now, guessing. What's your roll cue? Uh, it says uh, for some that's been life changing. Life changing. I'm going to encourage people to sign up. Like, this yep. is your wake up so, call. Al and I are personally right ready. Right on camera, Savannah tosses. To okay. You. 30 in break. And Al, no references of the Simpsons land. We won't no, it none. All. None <laughs> whatsoever. Tomorrow, no crusty. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You're my crusty. <laughs> Aww. That's sweet. We're, we're making a loop around the water. All right, guys, smile. We got five minutes of smiling. Five minutes of smiling. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Keep walking, guys. Two. Big cheers here, guys. Woo! Woo! We are doing great. How are you guys doing? Woo! making our way through Universal Studios Florida. It's not a bad place to walk. Now, as you know, for many of our Start Today members, a daily walk has become a routine. And for a lot of you, it's life-changing. 45 and take. <laughs> does Al toss back at the end, or does he go to break? See, that was August. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Al, Al, at the end, you toss back to New York. Okay. 20. And all I do is walk like this. Al, do you need prompter? Yeah, let's just. 15. You guys can hug your the right side of the bridge. Guys, we're going to let Al kind of shift. Al, Stephanie, slip, shift okay. this way. Okay. Stay away from Sorry. Puspy land. Stay behind us. Stay behind us. On the left here. Five, four, three. Keep moving, guys. Two. And we love hearing from our Start Today members who inspire us all to keep moving. Remember, it's just one step at a time for as long as you can. As Stephanie Mansour has been keeping us going, leading the walking challenges from the very start. And, and you've got some easy ways to enhance any walk, Steph. Oh, absolutely. So for those of you that are looking to step it up a notch, we are going to pump up our walks, right? We're going to pump our arms up in the air. So this adds in some cardio, which is great for our heart, which we often forget is a muscle. So if you're walking and if you're good with balance pump your arms up in the air for a little added calorie burn and to help get you out of breath a little bit <laughs> sooner now <laughs> That's right. And, and for, uh, what's, what are the, some of the biggest takeaways, and how do people join the group? Yeah, so you want to make sure that you go to today.com and get our November walking challenge. Uh -huh. Now, this is huge. We are gearing up. Are you guys ready for it? We're gearing up. <laughs> We're gearing up to walk, walk, run, or run a 5K. So either a turkey trot or a rain run whatever you fancy we're going to have a plan for you over at today.com and i got to tell you we have members such as debbie who've lost almost 115 wow. pounds no longer using a cpap machine at night beverly has lost over 50 pounds and she's off of her anxiety medication and asthma medication mm -hmm. 
We've got so many amazing transformations just from people taking that first step. And Al, I want to encourage everyone at home, you know, this is our personal invitation to you to step it up before the holidays, before ah. next year starts. We want you in. So make sure you go to today.com and, and get the newsletter and get the new plan. And especially after uh, people are looking at those, that bowl of un un unhanded out <laughs> candy. Right. Uh, or whatever. Those fun sized bars they had yesterday. How do you get started? Because you know, a lot of people, it's the inertia. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So just getting started, the first step, I want you just to stand up, put your shoes on, and start walking. Even if it's just 10 steps, count them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mm -hmm. And for those of you at home, I've got a few more tips so that you can enhance your walk. Uh -huh. So first, we're going to breathe. So everyone, breathe in through That's the good. nose. Breathing is good. Yes, and breathe out through the mouth. Good. Breathe in through the nose. Breathe out through the mouth. Now, this can serve as a walking meditation, which can help to lower stress, lower anxiety, and boost your mood. Now, another thing I want to add in for those of you at home watching, if you can add in hills to your walk, ah. you're going to enhance those lower body muscles. Uh -huh. You're going to engage them and have some strength training added to your walk. And finally, you know, I know you've got your playlist. Yes. People love your playlist. So moving to the beat of the music, if it's a higher paced beat, research actually shows that you walk faster. You you walk longer and you have more energy. So really play up the tunes on your walk. All right, Stephanie Monsoor, again, don't forget, go to today.com, start today, sign up, be part of an over 110,000 strong community. Woo! Guys, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. absolutely. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you. Nice. <laughs> hey. Hey now. I brought him back to the tips because I know yes, they had the did. lower thirds. Yeah. But I could talk about the testimonials you, all day long. I feel like you need a water pack in the backpack, yeah. like a hiker. Oh. Everyone doing okay? Yeah. Okay, okay. Right. Woo! How are you, Mike? Are you all right? <laughs> that is, that is the real workout. I know. Trust me, slow down for one second. Okay, well, let Mike get on the cart. <laughs> yeah. That was incredible. Yeah. Right? We're waiting for our other camera guy. All right, just in time. Still streaming? Should we? Uh, yeah, okay, we're moving along. All right, all right. We're moving, we're moving. We're moving! We're moving and we're walking, <laughs> and we're walking. <laughs> Steph, talk to me about how important uh, hydration is. Yes, so for every 15 minutes of exercise, you want to have an extra eight ounces of water. So okay. what I recommend doing is if you're going on that 20 minute walk, have a cup of water before you head outside or half mm -hmm. or a full water bottle, depending on the size. And then when you come back from your walk, have another glass of water. Uh -huh. And this is in addition to the recommended drinking half your daily um, ounces of water per day, mm -hmm. half of your weight in ounces. Oh, That's okay. what I want you to drink every single day. Now, the water not only helps, you know, fuel us a little bit for the walks and helps right. our muscles, but it also helps if people are looking for weight loss or weight management. It mm -hmm. helps with fatigue, helps curve cravings even. So if you mm -hmm. are going for that Halloween candy still today, make sure that you yourself have oh, one glass of water. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, that felt good. Woo. Feels oh. amazing. Oh, that was so good. Uh, you, you touched on this. What about what about nutrition? Yes, so nutrition, what has been key for so many of our members has been the inclusion of additional protein into mm -hmm. their everyday diet. So when you have those protein-packed snacks, like nuts, protein bars, protein shakes, even a half a piece of chicken for a snack, uh -huh. you're going to notice that your overeating habits tend to fade away because the protein is what helps to elevate those blood sugar levels. Uh -huh. So we actually do have a free, easy eating plan uh, over in the Facebook group, Start Today, that you can get for free, and it outlines 
you know, all the benefits of eating more protein, ideas for protein-packed meals and snacks. And that's something, you know, we've got a lot of testimonials, transformations from our members on Today.com. That's something that they reference, too. It's uh -huh. not a diet, but it's focused on adding foods in like those lean proteins. And then, you know, some people, like, I tend to walk by myself. Uh-huh. But what are the uh, benefits of people who, you know, walk as a group, yeah. or walk with a buddy? You know, that camaraderie is something that, you know, maybe, maybe you might go out to dinner with people or you might go to the movies or you might socialize. But the walking and that endorphin release when you're exercising with someone really builds a special bond. And I will say if you are like a loner like yourself or, or like I am too on my walks, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, you know, it that's, is. It that's is a, that sounded really sad. I know. I you're know. a loner. <laughs> if you're a lonely human being, you have no friends. You have no, oh. <laughs> Do you prefer to walk alone? Mm -hmm. so does, does that make me sad? You'll what never do you think? walk alone. <laughs> There's water over here, folks. You need Grab water. some water. Hydrate, hydrate, chug, chug, chug. <laughs> Grab some water. Let's get some water for our crew over here. But if you are walking alone and if you want that additional support, that's what that face is for. That's what our yeah, walking meetups here are for. Mm -hmm. So really reach out and find the support you need because it can be challenging in your home environment. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Uh, watch that bottle of water. <laughs> oh, Zach's been waiting to do that. Sure. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, that was fantastic. That was the best. You're unbelievable. I love you. Uh, so here we go. We've been walking. Oh, look, it's an old Walgreens drugs. Steph, talk about the mental aspect yes. of the benefits of walking. Yes. So mentally, you know, like we mentioned, if you wake up on the wrong side of the bed or if you have aches and pains, getting outside and just getting yourself in a new environment, you know, one of my recommendations for people was to walk hills if uh -huh. you want to step it up and do something different. Well, if you don't have hills in your area, you can, instead of walking out and turning left, from your front porch, you can turn right and see something different, get in a new headspace, train your brain to be excited and have mm -hmm. a little bit more liveliness in your walk so that you're more surprised. Like, this is a beautiful walk here at Universal. Mm -hmm. Many of us, well, some of us have been walking here for a while, right? <laughs> but for me, it's my first time actually walking without going on rides. Uh -huh. Not yet. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, it's exciting and invigorating to your mind mm -hmm. and to your mood to change up your walking path. Oh, you know, here's a, you know, especially when the weather gets a little more inclement if you're mm -hmm. not in Florida, although, you know, they'll get thunderstorms and stuff. How do you motivate yourself? One of the things, I just have a hard time when I'm on a treadmill. Yes, yes, I agree. And I think that's where the music, the podcasts, the mm -hmm. playlists come into play. Because you're being able to stimulate your mind while you're moving but, like, not going anywhere, mm -hmm. which can be demoralizing a little bit. Exactly. So I, I recommend, uh, you know, using your sense of hearing. But also, if you want to, you know, light candles in, in your at-home workout environment. Don't hold them while you're walking. Don't hold them. Okay, no, Okay, that's no. good. That's good. <laughs> Put the matches down after. Um, but, yeah, if you want to light a candle so you have, like, a smell or if you want to turn your you know workout area into your own kind of sanctuary mm -hmm. and like the place that you're excited to go to so for some people that might be adding in flowers for other people that might be adding a, a painting or a poster or even just a positive affirmation up on the wall that you look at every day on that treadmill and you're walking towards that affirmation it's also i find it's a good time to uh uh to binge watch a little tv yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, especially if you're not going for a certain pace um, or if you don't need any motivation to walk faster. Stretches? Okay, so we're going to do some stretches. We're going to stop and stretch. Too. Okay. Sure, great. that's a great idea. Okay, great. All right, so everyone, we're going to reach our arms up, to the, up in the air. Clasp your hands if you can, or if you're holding a water bottle, grab a wrist. Reach over to your right. Good. And stretch the left side. Everyone feel that? Feel Finger. that. Ooh. Ooh. Good. Ooh. Come back to center over the other side. Ooh. Ooh. Do you, do you have to make that sound? Yes. Okay. Just checking. Just checking. And then we're going to round forward to stretch the muscles of the upper back. Good. This is good for posture. And then bring the arms up and back. Release them down. Good. Clasp behind your chest. Shoulders back. Lift your chest. Good. Take that deep breath in like we talked about. Breathe out through the mouth. Good. And release. Do those shoulder rolls here for me. Good. Loosen up the muscles of the traps, the neck here. We're loosening up the upper back. And this helps us with, does anyone know what this helps us with? 
better walking posture. Oh. All right, so doing those shoulder rolls. And then we're going to do little tiny soccer kicks. So loosen up. Do you feel that in your butt? Feel, feel loosen up. Especially when up. the person behind you kicks yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you already got hit this with the water This guy's been rock. on my butt the whole time. <laughs> Back off, Jack. <laughs> you got hit with the water bottle. So what's a kick in the uh, butt? It's right? true. <laughs> All right. Soccer kicks. Good. And then we're going to bring one knee up, hug it in, and then other knee up, hug it in. Good. Nice and gently here. Good. So we're doing this dynamic stretching. What you can do before oh, what happens or after. if you get a cramp? Yes, if you get a leg cramp, you want to make sure you're having enough magnesium. You want to make sure you have enough potassium. So a banana is very great for that. Coconut water. Ooh, Staying the minions, hydrated. banana. <laughs> Staying hydrated with, with your regular water. And also, the stretching is so important for us. So the dynamic stretching before and then after, we're going to put the right leg forward on that heel, bend the left knee, and lean forward. Does everyone feel that behind their right uh -huh. leg? Yeah, can I hear it? Ooh. Ooh. Yes, yes. All right, and then go ahead, come back up, and we're going to switch sides to the other side. Good. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Good. And then go ahead ooh, and rest. Ooh, uh, Take it out uh, a little bit. Ting tang, walla bing bang. <laughs> All right. We're Woo. taking a That's little bit of a slower walk now. <laughs> This is our cool down, Al. Yes, it's cool down. This is our cool down. Cool down is good. Cool down. Yes, yes. You all right, Jamelli? Okay, just checking. I don't want anything to happen to you. You're a national treasure. You should be buried. Just kidding. It's a joke. Come on. I kid because I love. Uh. This is the cool down. This is the cool down. Yes. Do you? I mean, yes. Steph, do you? What's the benefit of the cool down? The benefit of the cool down is that, you know, well, for me, it's so that I don't go inside and just sit right down. Okay. <laughs> I'm motivated to go in and take a shower after right. this. You know, sorry. Um, but also the cool down, it helps to re lower your heart rate. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not really good to go really, really fast and then stop. So you want to make sure that your nervous system, your heart muscle, everything can recalibrate. So uh -huh. have that cool down in. And it also, again, it, to your point with the muscle cramps, it is helpful to go a little bit slower so that you're loosening up your body. So mm -hmm. even here as we walk, if you guys want to shake your legs a little as you walk, just jiggle your thighs as you walk, take slower steps. Wow. <laughs> important we get the highlighter part. Okay. It helps to keep us loose and limber. You guys feel that? Yeah. 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 Great. Wow. Awesome. Hey, Steph, what about, um, are we, are we're coming back at 8.50. Can we hear, uh, 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 I don't hear any IFB at They're this moment. Break. They're in break. Okay. Yeah. I knew that. Uh, Steph, what about, uh, you know, people talk about, you know, when you embark on any exercise program, checking with your doctor. Yes, yes. So I, I should have mentioned that right up top. Always check in with your doctor, a uh, registered physician, before you start any sort of workout plan. Uh -huh. Now, walking, I feel, it's an everyday activity. Right. It's kind of like, you know, we get up, we walk to the bathroom, we walk to the family room, we walk to the kitchen. So, that, so it's part of our life. Yes, it's part of our everyday lives and everyday movement. So the walking, you should be okay, unless you are on certain medication right. or special doctor's orders that say um, that you should take it easy and, of course, be on bed rest. We don't want to mess with that. Right, no, no, no. Um, um, but yes, if you're before you're doing strength training or before you're doing something more intense, like more than five or ten minutes of stretching, uh -huh. definitely check with your doctor. Great. Great question, Al. I love oh. that question. Yeah, you're right, because that's a big point. Well, we try. Yeah, a lot of people in our group too talk about you know their their health implications and how that may be keeping them sidelined and not able to do all of the workouts. So mm -hmm. even if you just do like I said, five minutes of walking, do a little bit of stretching, do the breathing, have your positive affirmation mantra, that's going to help you get started. But without you know negatively impacting wherever you're at health wise. Mm -hmm. Lots of pictures and a crowd moment. Okay. Then you'll have about minute to 90 seconds okay come around the corner confetti button it up okay, okay. <laughs> unless you're going to talk to somebody else you don't no, need to have okay it, it looks nice but oh, i thought it, like that was just for the streaming guys, i guess like 50 feet closer okay, okay. 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 Stop 
Here, guys. Slow. Guys <laughs> need doors. Happy birthday, buddy. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, what a cutie. It's really cute. And, and, proud, of him and proud of our Start Today members uh, for moving along with us. Spirit for providing this whole group of speakers this morning. And for those of you watching, head to today.com to receive 20% off your own set of speakers. And while you're there, make sure you sign up for our newsletter. And as we close, we want to thank our friends at Universal Orlando Resort for welcoming our today community and of course is part of NBC Universal the parent company of NBC News want more ways to feel good make sure you check out with our start today uh, start today special on our today all day streaming channel on Peacock and when you're here make sure you go to the Today Show Cafe baby oh, we're going to be showing you some good food with that oh. What inspires you now? Like, what kinds of things inspire you? Women. Yeah. Women. I, I, uh, I have such an appreciation, a deep appreciation of women and what they have to go through mm -hmm. to be uh, successful in life. And that doesn't mean stars. Mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean the head of corporation. Just handling their lives mm -hmm. and being a parent. Mm -hmm. That takes enormous amount of work, and it's about time that we support it. See, I, that's what I love so much, mm -hmm. that we are supporting each other. Well, you've been marching, and you've been fighting the good fight from the very beginning. You were there when Dr. Martin Luther King gave his I Have a Dream speech. There are life-changing moments. I was not more than 15 feet away from him watching him do that speech. The Why was it important that you were there during that I Have a Dream speech? Because it, it settled for me once and for all that I had a responsibility, mm. that I had advantages that many, many people didn't. And I'd been there when I didn't, mm -hmm. so I understood very well. Mm -hmm. I understood what this struggle was about. Mm -hmm. I just want to think about your cool life and the things you've, not just the things you've witnessed, but the things you've participated in. Do you, do you know at this point that you are, that you're worthy of everything you've achieved and everything. Well, I certainly feel that I've earned yeah. everything mm -hmm. that is wonderful and yeah. good and a reward. Yeah. I absolutely feel that I, that has not, I, that has not come cheaply. Mm -hmm. I've had to earn every bit of that. Yeah. And I'm very proud of that. And lastly, um, You've, uh, as I keep repeating, you've changed the lives of so many people. Countless you'll never know. That's a, Most you'll astounding. never know. It's astounding. Um, what is it? <gasps> oh, I've got to tell, tell you Tell me. Else. I want to know. <laughs> I had done a television interview, and I talked about my attempt at suicide. Yeah. About a year later, I was walking into the lobby of the Waldorf Astoria in New York, and I see somebody across the lobby, which mm -hmm. is huge, go. Mm -hmm. So I walked toward them and they ran toward me and they held my hands and they were in tears. It was a man. And he said, thank you. Huh. Oh, this is hard. He said, thank you. You saved my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. And uh, that's when I thought, I, I just have to help in any way that I can. So, you know, words do have meaning, and when you mm. have people playing mm. with them and saying dreadful, untrue things, mm. it's heartbreaking. Well, you're a healer. 
you know what? I think I am. I think I am. A healer. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we need Kleenexes <laughs> on aisle one. Welcome to our Start Today special. I'm Al Roker. Our, our Start Today walking challenge, sponsored by Easy Spirit, began with a really simple goal, just to let's all get outside, go for a walk. But uh, unbelievably, it has grown into something incredible. There are over 100,000 of you who are members of our online community, where everybody relies on each other for support and motivation. And this month, we wanted to kick it up a notch. Our November walking challenge is going to prepare us for walking or running a 5K. All you need to do? Commit to six weeks of training. That's it. And we're going to do it together and reach that goal. But maybe you need a little extra motivation to get started on your walking journey. So just hang out. You could sit or you could stand and watch and maybe walk in place. Because over the next half hour, we're bringing you some of our favorite Start Today success stories. We begin with a member of our Start Today community. Christy Pham found success with our fitness plan and now is inspiring others to get active one step at a time. But she did sit down with us over the summer to give us a hint. Take a look. Three years ago, I had a miscarriage, which took a toll on my mental and physical health. I was in a dark spot. I was struggling with my weight and I wanted to make a change. I decided to commit to walking every day for 100 days. I started on my own, but once I saw Al kick off the Start Today walking plan We're gonna get walking. and joined the Facebook community, I suddenly had 80,000 people cheering me on and walking with me. My motivation skyrocketed. I noticed changes quickly. When I started walking in my hilly neighborhood, I had to stop and slow down along the way. Now those same hills are a breeze. My body changed too. Inches were coming off, I had more energy, and reduced depression and anxiety. For motivation, I have some friendly competition with a group of friends tracking our steps on our fitness watches, mainly looking to beat ourselves from past weeks. When I shared my progress in the Start Today group, I was overwhelmed by hundreds of positive comments, including from Al himself. My commitment to walking is now a permanent change. I'm well past my 100 days and I have no plans to stop. And Christy, good morning. Yay. We're so excited to hear your story in person um, because it really is so motivating. Because I'd imagine those first couple of days, the first week or two, when you actually decide to do this crazy thing, it's tough, right? It's, what were you feeling? It's very tough. Um, one of the things that I learned is that you don't need the motivation to start. Mm -hmm. You get out there and the motivation will follow. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I love that. We Go ahead, Al. No, well, I just was going to say, you've gotten to the point now, and I think I'm kind of at the same point, where you actually crave, physically mm. crave and mentally crave getting out there. If you don't, all of a sudden it's like, oh, I need to get out of there. Absolutely. Um, when I first started, I was having a lot of health anxiety. And within a few weeks, when I started walking, I saw that anxiety go down. And so very quickly, I knew that I needed to get out there and do that walk in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have the anxiety anymore. See, that's what I wanted to ask you, because I think, you know, quite often we talk about exercising, it's always weight, which, look, it bothers a lot of us, or yeah. what's on the scale, inches. But it's more than that, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. And you don't have to walk 20 miles. I started with 20 minutes and I'm up to two miles a day and that can change your life, it can change your body. I'd imagine it's, it's a weird thing, you know, to get that need to crave the exercise. You probably thought you'd never get to that point, but there are little victories you've had along the way that aren't scale related. So what have been some, you know, profound moments for you through this whole process? Absolutely. Um, one of the biggest moments was um, my identity changed. Mm. Yeah, it, before it was, I was the plus size mom. I was worried about fitting in the seat or the chair. And um, even my son would refer to me as like the big mom. Uh -huh. And um, a few weeks ago, he saw a woman walking 
and he goes, Mom, look, there's a there's a walker like you, mm -hmm. and it was an average sized woman, and to have him refer to me mm -hmm. as this average sized woman was. Amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, it changes the way you feel about yes. yourself. I mean, self-esteem, all that, and and you find yourself. Uh, I think you're the same way I am, Christy. That you now start to push yourself. So instead of just walking, maybe add a little jogging to it mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. you, did, did, that, did that surprise you? Absolutely. I never thought that I would be jogging 137 days in, but at the 130 mark, I started jogging short intervals. Mm -hmm. So if I can do it, anybody out there can do yeah. it. That's so yeah. great. When we started this start today, and Al was out there walking on the plaza. Al, did you have any idea no, not much what you guys were going to do? Yeah. Well, we're going to walk, see uh, who's going who's gonna to join this. Yeah. So now we got to uh, It's like, like your, your community, community, right? Support too. It is an exceptional group. That's There's awesome. 180,000 wow. people, and they are absolutely super motivational. You guys have a small city. Yes. I know. That's <laughs> us. We're a whole village. We're a whole village. Walking every day. That's so good. Thank village. you, Chris. That's great. Thank nice so to meet you. It's so nice to meet you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Chrissy says last time we spoke, she logged her 200th walk, down more than 80 pounds, and her energy is off the chart. Way to go, Christy, and keep logging those steps. Well, coming up, we're going to meet a couple who are walking miles side by side, and they say it's changed their lives in a big way. Then, a sisterhood of walking women stepping up for each other, and now that movement is spreading to cities all around the country. We'll be right back. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. And welcome back to our Start Today walking special. Of course, walking is great for physical health, but also helps relieve stress and can increase mindfulness. I recently met one couple that's taking walking to a whole new level, lacing up their sneakers and logging some serious miles. The ability to get outside and to be physically active during this time was frankly indispensable for our emotional health. Mike Varley and Jesse Hyatt of Brooklyn, New York, had always made a hobby out of getting their steps in. We decided to walk from San Diego to LA, which is 120 miles. We did the length of Vermont, and we went from the Pacific Ocean to Olympia, Washington. But during the COVID-19 pandemic, they stepped up their game. I pitched to Jesse this crazy idea that we walk five marathons a week for one calendar year around New York City. Driven by a desire to challenge themselves mentally and physically, the couple began walking 26.2 miles a day, multiple times a week, starting in June 2020. I have been working in the fashion and textile industry. She had her business and still uh, managed to walk three days a week, and uh, I walked the five days a week for the one calendar year. Mike leaving his job at a video game company to dedicate himself full-time to the project. Before they hit the pavement, the two spending 18 months planning everything from their routes to meals to their outfits. This was a full-time job. How did you financially support yourselves? When I worked at the video game company, a large portion of my responsibility was tracking the budget. I have some good spreadsheet skills. Part of the 18 months was making sure that we saved up enough money to do this comfortably. So. To take me through a typical walk. The average day 
was nine and a half hours. And the first three months, what we were doing was hitting every neighborhood in New York City. And uh, after we started doing a bunch of themed walks, we did one that was famous Brooklyn female vocalists and the high schools they went to, uh, which was great. It really ran the gamut. Over the course of the year, Mike and Jesse logged 7,000 miles documenting their journey on their YouTube channel and podcast. They say the benefits went well beyond calories burned. If I have a slight pain in my calf, that will go away. If I have that thought that's really making me feel nervous or uncomfortable, that will also go away. And it really was interesting just how the physicality of it um, mirrored and paralleled the mental um, experience. So how, how did you guys change physically? I think I lost somewhere between 15 and 20 pounds, something that was uh, the most affirming for me was that I still had like a little bit of uh, belly fat going on at the end of the, the whole thing. If you're walking 7,000 miles and you still have a little bit of belly fat, uh, maybe your body's okay. You know, like my body is what it is. The walks pushed Jesse and Mike to make discoveries about themselves and each other. I have the ability to conquer challenges and, and know that difficult experiences won't be forever. I learned that I'm definitely with the right person. This project is so special to us and so important. So we ended up inviting our friends and family to join us for parts of our final marathon. And we got married in Marine Park at the very end of the marathon. It was honestly one of the best days of my life. What would you say to somebody who's thinking, I'd like to do something like this. It's just one step at a time. It doesn't need to be 26.2 miles each day. That is extreme. You can walk around your block. It could be one mile a day. It's just getting out and feeling the air and feeling the pavement or the grass under your feet. It's such a game changer. It feels so good. What an inspiring story. I tell you, it wants to keep me walking right now. Well, from a couple to a sisterhood, the group City Girls Who Walk is made up of women who are bonding one step at a time. And trust me, when they go on a walk, you cannot miss them. Dylan recently found out how it all began. If you would have told me 250 people would come to a walk in New York City, I would have never believed you. <laughs> Every walk is a good walk for Brianna Cohn. It's one thing to go for a walk or go for a walk with friends, but you turned this into something huge. I was feeling a little lonely, a little isolated, and I was like, what if I post it on my TikTok? What if we did a walk club where we just like drink our coffee, we chit chat, we leave our worries behind. The 28-year-old fitness trainer who had already amassed millions of followers across TikTok and Instagram asked her community if they would join her for a walk around New York City's Pier 45. People were like, oh my God, I want to join. This sounds amazing. Like, people were sending it to their friends, and I was not expecting that. I was expecting, like, 10, 20 people. On her first group walk back in March of this year, more than 100 women showed up for a stroll, and City Girls Who Walk was born. How would you describe the perfect walk? You listen to that feel-good music, and you just get lost, lost outside, lost in the time, and just a quick, like, 30-minute 30, 30 walk. That's all you need. Brianna didn't want the walking group to be a huge commitment. The plan was once a week for a 40-minute walk. That's it. Some girls, like, go to brunch after. Some just hang out and chat. What is it about walking with others? When you're walking by yourself, I feel like so many thoughts come into your head. But if you walk with someone else, you can kind of forget all of that and just talk about life and just, like, feel that connection. The event blew up on social media with hundreds of women showing up week after week forming a sisterhood in the process. So who goes on these walks? Who's walking together? It ranges, not kidding, from like 18 to 65, 70. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Soon, women in other cities like Philadelphia, Boise, and Phoenix were creating their own branches of City Girls Who Walk. What's some of the most meaningful feedback you've received from this? I actually pulled up one of my favorite quotes that somebody said to me. They said, City Girls Who Walk has changed my life. It is so, so much richer and more full of love with dear new friends in a season when I really, really needed them. I can't thank you enough. How so that make you feel? It's, it honestly, like, it could bring me to tears. Like, it's helped so many girls, and that's exactly why I started it. 
The future is bright for Brianna. She started weekly picnics for city girls who don't feel like walking and is hoping to expand to group fitness classes as well. What advice would you have for folks at home watching this who just kind of need that extra push to get off the couch and to just get outside? I would love every single person to come. Just take that first step. Just like get off the couch, come. You don't have no idea like who's going to be there, who you're going to meet. It could be your best friend for like your life. Dylan, thanks so much. And City Girls Who Walk just keeps on growing. They told us their last couple of walks, get this, had more than 400 folks walking with them. That is awesome. So by now, I know you are motivated to get moving. So our Star Today leader, fitness expert Stephanie Mansour, is going to share a full body workout that you can do anywhere. We'll be right back. The general election is right around the corner. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about, and you'll instantly get voting rules. See the next big deadline, learn how to take action for your plan, and even help others make their plans. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for November. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The general election is right around the corner. If you have voting questions, we have voting answers. Head to NBCNews.com slash plan your vote. You'll find voter registration deadlines, early voting dates, vote by mail information, and so much more. Because some of the rules have changed since 2020. And now's the time to start planning for your November vote. What's the state of the United States? That is up to you. On your mark, get set, plan your vote. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. The general election is right around the corner. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about, and you'll instantly get voting rules. See the next big deadline, learn how to take action for your plan, and even help others make their plans. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for November. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs> Welcome back to Start Today. Okay, so we've heard some incredible success stories, and now we want to help you get started on your own journey. Today, fitness contributor Stephanie Mansoura leads our Start Today online community. And this summer, she stopped by Hoda and Jenna with three women to share her blueprint to building a walking routine. She brought along these three members of our group to share the reasons why they walk. My name is Cherie Dampier. I'm 56 years old. And I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I work in the Department of Social Services. I began the Start Today program during the heart of the pandemic. Stephanie and the group itself was very encouraging. I am doing our June workout plan while I'm talking to you. I love to walk around New York City. The exercise became just a part of my life and it became fun. I would encourage anyone, if you want to take charge of your health, you can do it. My name is Maura O'Connor Service. I'm 56 years old and I'm from Orfield, Pennsylvania. I started the Start Today program back in October of 2021. During the pandemic, I did put on 40 pounds. When you're in your you know, mid to late 50s and you have the hormones and the menopause and you've had children, it's an uphill battle. Hearing Steph just say, just do five minutes, just do a little bit. That really helped me. Hi, my name is Jessica. I'm 45 years old and I live in Bethel, Connecticut. Since I started, I have a set goal of 6,000 steps and I've increased it as the months have gone on. I've lost 25 pounds and lowered my cholesterol 20 points with Stephanie's motivation and energy and all the positive um, comments from everybody on the site. It's just been, it's been great. Hats, hats off, ladies. Amazing. That's amazing. All right, we're going to 
talk to you guys in just one second, but Stephanie, people are looking and saying, wait, I want to walk, but what's like your number one tip? What should we do first day? The number one tip right now, if you're watching at home, stand up off the couch, get off your chair, and just start with a few Just marching steps. right in front yes. of you. Yes. Our today.com workout plans only require 20 minutes a day, but if 20 minutes of walking seems too much, guys, go ahead and just aim for 10 steps. Then up the ante and go for 60 seconds and then five minutes and slow and steadily build your mm -hmm. way up to those 20 minutes a day. I mean, that's so smart. Okay, Jessica, let's start with you. What's something you want to work on? So I'm an online teacher and I sit a lot during the day. I don't have, I don't get up. Yeah. So I think what I'm, what I need help with is just the motivation to get out of my chair mm -hmm. and leave that computer. Yes. yes. And what you can see here is Jessica's a go-getter. She's already lost 25 pounds Amazing. this year alone. And she set her step goal for herself. So what I recommend is instead of saying, okay, every hour I'm going to get up and walk around the house. She's not doing any of that right now. So let's say we're just going to do it one time a day. Once a and day. if you pick once a day, yeah. then after a week of proving to yourself that you can get up once a day, then we can up it to twice a day. But slow right. and steady really does win the race, and she's a great example of that. Right, let's talk. Sheree, if there's something you want to work on, what would that be? It would be eating and nutrition. During yeah. the pandemic, I dropped at least 65 pounds. Wow. So the goal for me is it's a lifestyle. <laughs> it's not about the number on right. the scale. Right. It's a lifestyle. And going forward, maintaining that life. That's a good. You're incredible. Good. All right, so what do you think, Steph? Yes, so I always say we're going to start with habit creation and then we're going to get to lifestyle transformation. So Cherie's already got the exercise part down. When it comes to food, what I like to focus on is looking at food as fuel. We're not yeah. looking at food as good or bad or we're good or we're bad because yeah. we eat certain things. We're looking at how can we sustain that healthy lifestyle, how can we fuel our bodies, and how can we consume more nutrients and let any of the junk food let that be there. Yeah. But focus on the nutrient dense yeah. food That's first. That's so smart. Okay, Maura, what about you? Um, I am in my mid to late 50s, I would say. Yeah. yeah. And I have not, I've been on this journey for a while now, and I've not seen the scale move. Yeah. yeah. Or inches in my clothing. Yeah. And I am menopausal and yeah. all, hormonal. Yes, all and the stuff. I am just wondering how I could cut that, though, so I could see a little bit of results. Okay, That's, all right. That's a good, good question. question. Yes. Sometimes a, you get stuck. Yes, and you get frustrated. Yeah. But what I like to focus on is those non-scale victories. They're almost just as important as the scale. So if you're feeling an increase in energy, if you're sleeping better, if your mood, if you feel happier, yes. if you feel more motivated, which Myra does. So the second thing that I would recommend doing, aside from focusing on non-scale victories, is also how can we level out those blood sugar levels, especially when we're hormonal and going through menopause, by eating protein every few hours. That's how we're going to stabilize our blood that. pressure, yeah. and also that's how we're going to stabilize our hormonal imbalances as well. So start with protein every three to four hours. I've got tons of food tips, guys, on our Start Today Facebook page. So this is where these ladies, ladies found me. We're so, wow, y'all are so inspiring. Awesome. And we're going to be checking in with y'all, too. Stephanie always brings the great advice. And up next, you're going to show us how to take it beyond walking. We're going to show you how to add simple strength training moves to the routine you use when we come right back. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide. How's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, yeah, I love that too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.
We are back with Start Today. Hey, are you one of the 100,000 online community members who've done wonders with walking? Well, if you're not, you can still join in. But if you are, you may want to add even more moves to your fitness routine. Today, fitness contributor Stephanie Monsor back recently had some great ways to get stronger while we walk. Fitness trainer Stephanie Monsoor, who leads our Start Today Facebook group, is here, along with some of our great Start Today Facebook members. Uh, now, before we start out and get to you, Steph, I want to—we've got a, just some um, amazing folks here. We've first of all got uh, Elizabeth Rogdakis, uh, Lillian Mora, and Kim Anata. Uh, Atanasu, who is here. I told you I'd get that wrong, but anyway, we finally did. So uh, you're all cancer survivors. We're cancer survivors, and we work for Northwell. Okay. And, and we're nurses. Yeah, and, and you're nurses, so you're doing God's work. We appreciate it. And, and I got to tell you, you know, I was, I'm a cancer, prostate cancer survivor, and my doctor wanted me walking you know, the first week I was back. How has it helped? How did that help I you? had surgery and was walking a week later also. Walking has um, allowed us to encompass many things, mm -hmm. one of them being um, walking for health. Right. Walking for sanity. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we all are in we stressful need that jobs. Now. <laughs> yeah. um, we worked right through COVID, and walking was a way we got out, uh -huh. shared and supported each other, right. okay? And with the group now, I feel I'm a part of a group larger than myself. Yeah, oh, you that's know, terrific. Had, you know, hitting that Facebook page in the morning mm -hmm. and getting whatever tips are coming through to us. Isn't it, did you all like getting a, trying to get it done first thing in the day? Yes. This yes. way, you yes. know, you yes. check the box yes. and you feel like you've accomplished something yes. before you even go out the door. Really appreciate it. Okay, so Steph, mm -hmm. how important, the walking is fantastic. You, you've got a future in this business, I'll tell you. <laughs> All right, there you go. As long as you don't come <laughs> you after get me. Ready to yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Steph, why is it that we, we've done upper body or lower, lower body, but uh -huh. the whole full body thing is yes. important too? Yes. So we are going to put this all together this month for everyone. So everyone loved the upper body workouts, right, ladies? Yes. yes. All right. Everyone loves the walking. So uh -huh. we're going to step it up a little bit. We're going to do some lower body exercises as well this month, Al, and that's going to help us propel faster, uh -huh. propel easier in our walks and also help us with balance and stability. And how important is strength training? Strength training is hugely important, especially as we get older. We're trying to really tighten up those muscles to uh -huh. firm up the bones. Right. And it's helping us to not, you know, have more trips and falls. It okay. helps us to get up and down from the couch easier. Well, Makes us feel better in general, right? We like that. Okay, so what's our first All right, move? so the first exercise, we're actually going to start with the upper body with okay. these dumbbells. So you can work out anywhere, anytime this month. All you need are a set of dumbbells. We've got uh -huh. three pounds here, Al. You and I are stepping it up with six pounds, nice. all right? We're going to hug the elbows in. The first move is serve the platter. So we serve the platter forward, we open it out to the side, get a little chest stretch, okay. come back through center, and then hug the elbows back in. Good. So we reach forward, extend out, stretching the chest, come back to center, and hug in. And then how many reps are you going to do? We're doing 10 reps of these. Uh -huh. And Al, this is really important because it's helping us be able to swing our arms with mm. better posture right. while we're walking. Strengthening is balance the upper part of body. This too? Balance is we're engaging the core here, so belly button pulls in towards the spine. Uh -huh. And then we do this move, you know, 10 times, like I said. Right. And then we move on to the next exercise. Okay, what's the next one? All right, so the next exercise is for our lower body, specifically the outer hip, to help help us with that stability. So I've got our modification people over here. Uh -huh. You're going to be doing a side leg lift. Okay. All right. So we lift that leg out to the side. And then for the full version, we're doing a side lunge and coming to center. So let's everyone do it together. Here we go. Side lunge oh, and center. Side lunge, good, and center. Our modifiers over here, if you have knee issues, hip issues, if your bones or joints just feel creaky, mm -hmm. I want you to do those leg lifts over here and then do the side lunge only if your knees and back feel okay. And okay. again, 10 of these on each side, right. and then we move on to the next exercise. Next one. Are you ready to get down on the ground? I don't think so. <laughs> I can All get right. down, I just can't get back okay. up again. That's, that's been the big problem. <laughs> All right, so the last exercise Should've is worn for a the skirt. core. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna hug the knees in, squeeze uh -huh. the inner thighs together, good. Slowly roll down, abs pull in. Pretend okay. like someone's punching you in the stomach. Good. Yikes. Hold this here for a modification. Step two is lifting the legs up and holding on underneath the legs. Uh -huh. That's step two. Step three is the full V-sit right here. What do you think? Uh, oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> I love watching you all do that. <laughs> Just give these people a hand. Huh? Wow. And, and again, 10 reps. 10 reps. Hold for 10 seconds, 10 uh -huh. times. 
and then move on to the next ab exercise. And now, in the in the in the program, how often do we do this? Is it like every other day? Yes, we're doing every other day strength training. We want to give our muscles time to recover. So uh -huh. you continue with the 20 minutes a day of walking, but in lieu of walking every other day, you can do this 20 minute strength training routine. All right, Stephanie, thank you, and thank you, ladies. Woo! What a workout. Well, for more daily workout tips and motivation, be sure to head to today.com slash start today. And while you're there, check out our November Start Today Walking Challenge. It's a six-week program to help walk or run a 5K. Now, don't be intimidated. Believe me, if I can do it, you can do it. All you need to do is start today. But well, we want to thank you for joining us. I'm Al Roker, and we will see you next time. been waiting for this segment. Okay, one way to boost your energy is by changing what you eat. So we brought in NBC News and health nutrition editor, our pal Madeline Fernstrom. She's going to talk about superfoods. Okay, so what she talks about, and we also brought in a chef, Chef Kevin Curry. He's the guy behind Fit Men Cook to show us how to work those superfoods into a meal. All right, let's get started, Madeline, because first things first, I always wonder this. Like some days I'm depleted of energy. Yes. Sometimes I have tons and I always try to break it down. Like what did I eat? So what are the good foods that are good for energy? Okay. When you think about energy, you want to think about complex carbohydrates. That means they're fiber rich. They're digested more slowly. So your all your body cells are getting a steady stream of energy. And when you have that energy for fuel, you're going to stay perky and energized all day. It's that stream of fuel keeping your blood sugar stable. Mm -hmm. Oats. Oats so, are a biggie. Oats you got to have good. oats. Oats, whole grains, um, potatoes. All of these are going to be really good to give you that sustained energy because you don't want that little pop. You want it yeah. to last a long last time. Okay, so let's get to the first superfood that mm -hmm. you swear by. Mm -hmm. Okay, one of my favorites, and it's eaten around the world, these are sweet potatoes. You can eat them anytime. They are nature's perfect carbohydrate because they are a complex carbohydrate. They have a lot of fiber. They're nutrient dense. They're filled with vitamin A, vitamin C, magnesium, potassium. And what they do is give you that steady stream of energy because they're digested slowly. Remember, fiber rich. They're also very rich in potassium. Potassium is a salt. You hear about electrolyte balance when you exercise. It's really needed for that. So it's perfect. And an added plus it's sweet, but without added sugars. Yeah. Can't go wrong with that. All right. Well, yeah. we need Chef Curry. Okay, so Chef Curry, we got our potato. What are we going to eat? <laughs> yeah. I got you. I got you, Madeline. This is a great recipe. These are some sweet potato salmon cakes. So you're going to get a boost of a whole lot of good stuff. So we've got our baked sweet potato here. And this is a cool down. Just mash it up in a bowl. Now you got to add in the personality. So we've got some smoked paprika or some chili powder. Add in a little bit of turmeric for some inflammatory mm. health. Mm. And then we're going to add in some gluten-free panko, just a little bit, and then some green oh, yeah. onion. Mm. Now, going to mix this together. Now, this is an eggless recipe, and here is the reason why. We are going to be using salmon to go ahead and do this. Now, my good friend Jamie Oliver taught me this. Really, we're not good friends. He just follows me, me on like IG, but he doesn't like my photos or anything. But it's okay, Jamie. I haven't even thought about that. So we're going to chop it up into chunks and then mince it like this. And that's when you raw mince it, is it raw or have you already cooked it? Yes, this is raw. This wow. is raw salmon, and we're just going to mince it with a knife. No food processor is needed, oh. and it gets really sticky. And this helps everything to stay together. together. So we're going to add this into our bowl, mix this up just like this, mix it up, uh -huh. and you get this beautiful texture. So that you're going to form good. some patties, fire up a nonstick skillet, add in a little bit of olive oil. And you're going to cook these for about, I'd say about 
five to six minutes on each side. Mm -hmm. You can even place these in the oven. And the cool thing about this is you can also bake this recipe. Mm. You're going to get these sizzling. And then let me tell you afterwards, about 10 minutes later, you have these gorgeous, Give me that. beautiful salmon Perfect. patties. Yeah, sweet potatoes. With sweet potato. That's Delicious. awesome. Delicious. Madeline, go, th those combinations are great. Salmon, sweet potato. You have another good one that is a Hoda favorite. <laughs> this is, okay, a, a favorite area when it's a match made in heaven. It's mm -hmm. peanut mm -hmm. butter and bananas. I mean, who doesn't love this? A match made in heaven because it's energy now and later. You have the banana that's going to be a starchy uh, fruit that's going to be digested more slowly because of all that fiber. And then you'll get that boost of energy plus the longer lasting boost from peanut butter. That heart healthy fat slows mm -hmm. digestion down even more. So you'll get a pop of energy now and later. And you can combine it however you like. All right, Chef Curry, I know how I do it. I peel the banana and slather the peanut butter on it. But I bet you you have a better recipe. She me. uses it as a spoon, yeah, too. Scoop it right out. <laughs> Same thing with me, too. So this time, we're going to make some cookies, though, with this. So we're going to mash up a ripe banana in the bowl, and then we're going to add in our natural peanut butter. Now, make sure this is the natural peanut butter, right, Madeline? Not the kind that's got all the sugar and everything mm. else. This is just natural peanut butter oh, with the oil. Really? Then we're going to add in a little bit of coconut sugar or some brown sugar. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to beat up an egg, whisk an egg up, add that in there to our mix. Boom. Add in a little bit of the salt, just a little bit, a pinch mm -hmm. of salt there. And if it's payday, you can add in some vanilla bean. If not, just add in some <laughs> vanilla extract. Mix this together. And, you know, I'm not sure about y'all, but I like chocolate chip yes. um, cookies. So we're going to add in a little bit of antioxidant-rich dark chocolate. Sprinkle that in. Boom. And then you mix this together, and Sounds this good. is your cookie batter. Now, you can put this into the fridge if you need this to firm up just a little bit. But then you're going to scoop it out just how you would mm -hmm. normal cookies and then bake these for about 10 to 12 minutes. Mm. And look at this. Beautiful, what? dense oh, cookie. Oh, my God. Look at that. Awesome. Look at that. Hey, look guys, at that. Thank, thank that. you. Thank you, Chef Curry. <laughs> and thank you, Madeline. We miss you uh, for these recipes and a bonus one, popcorn and granola. Whoa. Go to today.com slash help. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I wave. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. It is Superfood Friday, and we have a twist for you on a takeout favorite. Here to make egg roll bowls. Today, nutritionist and our pal, Joy Bauer. Good morning, Joy. Good morning, guys. Oh, my goodness. I wish you could smell how fabulous it is mm. in my kitchen right now. I mean, this is when we need smell of vision I, I think you're going to love this one. <laughs> so it's like a deconstructed egg roll kind of turned stir fry. Right. Um, and it has all of those Asian flavors that we love and we crave, but I'm cutting the carbs and I'm bumping up the protein. Okay. So here, what I've started with, um, I blasted shiitake mushrooms with some heat. And what I love about these mushrooms, they're loaded with antiviral properties. And if you can't find shiitake, certainly you can use um, baby bella or you could mm -hmm. use mush uh, button mushrooms, anything goes. Next, this is just a store-bought bag of pre-shredded coleslaw mix uh -huh. because the star 
is really the shredded cabbage. Okay. And cabbage is loaded with vitamin C, but it also has... Um, it's part of the cruciferous family of vegetables, so it has compounds that are being studied for cancer prevention. Mm. And t- typically, I would let this wilt down and become a little bit more tender for about three minutes, but I'm going to fly through this, and you're okay. going to see how easy it is. Next, lean ground turkey meat. So this is just one pound. Mm-hmm. You could certainly use a lean ground sirloin if you want, or you can use ground chicken. And it's all about the marinades. It's all about the flavor. Well, I was just so, about to ask you because right there it can go a number of ways with the taste. How do you get it to taste like, you know, a traditional egg roll? That's exactly right. So all this is I'm sprinkling on two teaspoons of ground ginger, two teaspoons of garlic powder, mm-hmm. a little bit of salt. And if you want to kick up the heat, you can also put in uh, crushed red pepper flakes. Mm-hmm. And now for the wet marinade, this is just reduced sodium soy sauce, mm-hmm. a little bit of rice vinegar, and we have um, a dash of sesame oil. Okay. And you're just going to cook this and break it up. And I'm going to bring you over to my counter and show you what the finished product looks like. Okay. So if you can imagine, in 20 minutes, this is done. So come on with me. Oh, Cole Bauer, Joy, come Impressive. Here. Two camera shoot. Wow. I know. <laughs> It's all about Ian Bauer. And I have a real taste tester. Cole Bauer is in the house right Hi, Cole. now. Show what you're eating. Cole can't he hear doesn't have the air yeah, I haven't right. heard. <laughs> he's so cute. And he's going so, in with chopsticks. Very good. Yeah. This is what it looks like. I'm going to garnish it. Look, it's all shredded just like the mm-hmm. real McCoy. Mm-hmm. It's like the inside of an, an egg, egg roll. roll. And, oh. mm, can you see that? I can Look eat a whole bowl of that and, right now. And really quickly, uh, Joy, you, you've got a homemade duck sauce. Okay. We need the duck sauce. Three ingredients, Al. All it is, this is an all-fruit apricot jam, Mm -hmm. three quarter cup, and I'm adding in a tablespoon of soy sauce and a tablespoon of rice vinegar. And once again, if you want to kick up that heat, like Joy Bauer, Mm -hmm. you put in a little bit of red pepper flakes. All you do is you mix this up. It is so tangy. It is so sweet. And it just like brings it over the top. I'm going to show you this is this is one I just whipped up that Cole's mm, been eating. That is fantastic. But Cole Joy, is so yeah. lucky. That is so terrific. And you could use that Cole, later. Cole, come on back. Any leftovers you could probably throw into an omelet or a frittata. Oh, really yeah. Great. We got people. We got people outside. Oh, Gavin. it's Gavin. You know, wait, wait Gavin what is Gavin here? doing here? He's at work? Oh, my gosh. We have no producers who are here. That's why Gavin was hiding. Is Gavin back? All is right. This what y'all are, is this All right. trying to we tell us? We have one producer in the house Gavin. along with our crowd. We see you, <laughs> Gavin, and we love you. All right. We've heard this over and over again. You are what you eat. And it is true. The foods and drinks that we consume every day affect our gut, and they can cause all kinds of bloating and gas and discomfort, <laughs> not to mention bacteria. Wow. Yummy. Okay. So if your jeans were a little harder to zip, after the holiday weekend. I know, I feel like I am just a cheese cube. Our friend Madeline Furnstrom here is to take your gut back on track. She's going to help us figure out all the do's and don'ts to feeling better. Madeline, we miss you. It's so great to see you, honey. So great to see you. great to see you, too. All right, let's talk about it. So we always feel crummy when we inhale junk food. I know the feeling is yucky, but what does happen to our body when we eat junk food versus, like, the good stuff? You know, when you think about junk food, you're losing a lot of nutrients that your body is used to for digestion because you want to have things going nice and smoothly for your system, a lot of nutrients, a lot of fluids. So when you have junk food, as you see, you're eating now, it goes Mm -hmm. in your esophagus, your feeding tube, into your stomach, Mm -hmm. food's digested and goes all the way through in your intestines where the nutrients and fluids get absorbed and then you eliminate any waste products. But if you don't have healthy foods and you're missing nutrients and you're missing fluid, plus a lot of additives that your digestive tract is not used to with junk food, you're going to slow it down, sometimes get some clogging, and you're not going to feel good and have gas, bloating, constipation, and other problems. Mm. Now, when we do so have those things, you know, like gas and bloating and constipation, what, why? Why do we have that in there? You know, when when you look at that, your digestive tract is complicated. So it's not just food, eating your food in your stomach and, you know, call it a day. You have hormones and peptides and things being dumped into Mm. this whole digestive Mm -hmm. tract, and it has to move along. If you don't have enough 
fiber and probiotics and fluids through the three, the big three of gut health nutrients, you're going to have some clogging. And that's where you get gas and constipation and bloating and that sense that, you know, something just seems to be not right. And when you don't feel good like that, it's a problem. But those big three yeah. can make a big difference. And fortunately <laughs> for digestive health, what you eat can make a big difference. And a lot of these are going to sound familiar because the yeah. diet that's good for your gut is good for your brain and good for your heart. So your body knows what it needs. Sure. Right. So, all right, let's let's talk fiber for a second. First of all, I didn't know there were two types of fiber, the good fiber and the not great fiber. But tell us about what fibers we should be having and what's, what, what are some good sources? You know, fiber is really good. There's the insoluble and soluble. It doesn't matter what it means. One is acts like a rotor rooter in your digestive tract to get all of the uh, all of the food through your tract and keep it clean. That's insoluble because it means mm -hmm. it doesn't dissolve in water and it just mm -hmm. goes through mm. um, untested. So it's a lot of things that are in whole grains, the fiber that's in fruits and vegetables. These are your best sources: fruits and vegetables, whole grains, um, and you you want to get it in food. I can't stress this enough. Supplements are not uh -huh. nature's way of having mm -hmm. them. If you talk to your doctor and that's recommended, that's one thing. But stick with food and it's 25 grams and people say you know is that a lot well it's about five servings of fruits and vegetables remember that old five yeah. a day mm -hmm. and so if you have a diet that's rich in fruits and vegetables yeah. and whole grains you'll get up to 25 and that's important yeah right. okay so madeline probiotics is another big three you say get it in food though i mean i do take a probiotic every day you do you yeah feel? well mm -hmm. you know what it's for some people, taking a supplement can, can supplement food. Remember, this is not to replace. It's to supplement right. the foods that you're eating. And probiotics, the healthy bacteria, you need to have them every day. You can't have a container of yogurt once a week and say, oh, I'm, I'm getting what I need. These are healthy bacteria. And your digestive tract really needs that. It counteracts the uh, bad bacteria, which are always in our digestive tract. And also it helps digest food and helps to keep you regular. So it's from a lot of fermented food. So you think yogurt, kefir, it's even in miso um, and fermented uh, cabbages. So it comes in a lot of places, but fermented dairy like yogurt and drinkable kefir are really good sources. All right, awesome. good, and kombucha too, and drink lots of water. Uh, we love and you, Madeline. Drink lots of water. Thank you. Sorry, we got to wrap it up. We had so much more, but you know what? Yes. We can get more on our website. Yes. Uh, you can find more about good health, gut health. Head to hodaandjenna.com. The general election is right around the corner. If you have voting questions, we have voting answers. Head to NBCNews.com slash plan your vote. You'll find voter registration deadlines, early voting dates, vote by mail information, and so much more. Because some of the rules have changed since 2020. And now's the time to start planning for your November vote. What's the state of the United States? That is up to you. On your mark, get set, plan your vote. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Hey, I'm Hallie. It's good to be with you tonight. There's another legal filing today, and I want to cut through some of the weedsy stuff. And let's just, like, get to the point. They have started to vote on the PACT Act. If you're like, Hallie, stop speaking Washingtonese. This bill would basically give health care to veterans who have exposed to these toxic chemicals. Scott, I'm trying to make this as not D.C. as possible. The increased sort of anger that we've seen now in politics. I saw you searching for, I think, your microphone, Danny. Yeah. You are oh, I was you trying to do it on the slide. Live TV, man. It's okay. Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Yeah. Love you too. <laughs> Welcome back. It is Superfood Friday, and today nutritionist Joy Bauer is putting a spin on two easy comfort food recipes. Take a look. Hey guys, today we're making scrumptious, wholesome recipes using 
a muffin tin. First up is a mac and cheese butternut squash. So here I've roasted butternut squash cubes in the oven at 400 for about 25 minutes to get them super soft. And I just take a fork and I mash them so they're the consistency of mashed potatoes. And we're gonna start our indulgent cheese sauce. I'm adding one cup of low fat milk, half a teaspoon onion powder, quarter teaspoon of dry mustard, and an eighth of a teaspoon of paprika. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And now you have the option to add a few drops of your favorite hot sauce. Bring this to a gentle simmer. My milk is starting to gently bubble. Turn off the heat and I'm gonna add two cups of 2% sharp cheddar. Mix it so all the cheese melts throughout. We've got all of this luscious whipped butternut squash and I'm gonna mix it right in the pot and one tablespoon of softened butter. And now I'm adding my sauce right into my pasta. One thing, it's important to cook the pasta, your elbows, al dente, because remember, it's gonna cook again in the oven. I'm adding in one large beaten egg. Now we take our muffin tin and I'm gonna take half cup scoops to fill my compartments. I'm gonna top them with a little grated Parmesan cheese. And they go in the oven at 350 for about 20 minutes. I let these sit and firm for about five, 10 minutes. Pop them out with a knife or a spoon. I mean, good for you mac and cheese that you can eat with your hands. And now we're making three ingredient candy bars that'll really hit the sweet spot chocolate peanut butter crunch cups. Two cups of semi-sweet or dark chocolate chips, two cups of crispy rice cereal, although you can use any high fiber whole grain cereal, and a quarter cup of a creamy nut butter. I'm using peanut butter. So first I'm going to melt the chocolate, either using a double boiler or in the microwave. Now I'm just adding in a quarter cup of my creamy peanut butter using semi-sweet or dark chocolate chips will provide flavanols, which helps to keep our arteries healthy, our heart, our brain healthy. Now I'm just adding in my brown rice cereal. You can see this is like a crispy puffed brown rice cereal and mix until all of the cereal is coated. And we are ready for our muffin tin and distribute the chocolatey, peanut buttery goodness. I just wet my fingers so they don't stick to the chocolate and I press down to firm the shape. And just one more thing, you can sprinkle some coarse sea salt or kosher salt right over the top. Then I stash these in the fridge to firm up for about 30 minutes. As you can see, <laughs> I've already dug into two. Guys, I love this recipe so much. It's totally indulgent, perfectly portion control. You just pop them right out of the compartment. I mean, come on, you definitely want a bite of that. Mm. I and do, And we can actually. eat the whole thing? I know, we just see the flaming <laughs> forward as if. That's gonna help. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer, she is here, and in honor of back to school season, she's going to teach us a little lesson about how to sneak three superfoods back into three school lunches mm. for all ages. That's right. I've already been nibbling. Perfect time. So let's break it down. What is our first okay, superfood? Okay, so our first superfood is in the spirit of an apple oh. for the teacher. Nice. <laughs> so this is all about elementary school kids. First, let me say why this is a superfood. There's a bazillion varieties of apples, and all of them, no matter what the variety, or the color have something called pectin, pectin. within the skin and mm -hmm. in the inside flesh. Pectin is a type of fiber that helps to lower cholesterol. Oh. The other reason I love apples, they're totable, they're perfectly portioned, mm -hmm. and they're only 80 calories. Apples rock. Apples rock. So, so look what, what gonna we're, we're going to make breakfast nachos oh, wow. using apples. And it's so That's simple and idea. it's fun to do with kids. This is one apple just sliced. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take, this is vanilla yogurt, a Greek yogurt, but you could take mm. any kind of yogurt that you want. And you could also Ooh. have them pipe it on and, and have a lot of fun making squiggles. Oh, it's delicious. And then this is just some, some granola. Oh, granola. Granola, mm -hmm. yeah. You can use apple cinnamon or oats oh, and honey. Yummy. And then we have some raisins and you put on some coconut. Okay. I love Isn't it. that great? So yeah. simple. The only prep involved is slicing the apples. Right. But it comes it together so very, very, very quickly. Thank you, Joy. All right, so those are part of elementary kids. 
This could be for anybody, th too. Th this is for anybody. Yeah. I have to tell you, when I make the recipe, oh, yeah. I am upset obsessed with this recipe, but the superfood okay. for all kids is the classic peanut butter. Okay. We got to talk about peanut butter. It comes packaged with heart healthy fat mm -hmm. and protein and it's naturally lower in carbs. So it's really good for anybody that is looking to control their blood sugars. Okay. Um, when it comes to kids also, a lot of kids do have allergies, so obviously you have to be very sensitive to that. Sure. And you can swap in with this recipe, sunflower seed butter. So I'm going to try it for my kiddos It's great. they're allergic. So this yeah. is what I'm calling this recipe. Okay. Peanut butter, coconut, cookie dough dip. Oh. It tastes like cookie dough, but it has you a thinner it consistency. <laughs> Guys, I'm telling you, I'm obsessed with this recipe. Really hurry. good. So all I've done here is I've added to the food processor it. peanut butter, some almond milk, ground cinnamon, a little vanilla, and you put in your coconut oh. and you whirl it around mm. and it will keep in the fridge for three weeks. Oh, this three is weeks. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, wow, and that is delicious. It tastes so good, you can't even believe it's yeah, good for you. Soup. Now we're talking about college kids, and what do they love, Al? Ramen. Of course. <laughs> they love ramen. Soup for you. So instead, I'm going to show you how to make ramen with a superfood, oh. zucchini. Yeah. Uh -huh. Zucchini is great because it's packed with water. It's got potassium, which helps to banish bloat, and it's naturally low in sodium. And it's so simple. You spiralize it, mm -hmm. and you warm up vegetable broth, which you could do in a dorm room, and then you put in, where's our, our zoodles? And you right. just will simmer it in the pot mm -hmm. or in the microwave. Until it becomes soft and flavorful. And there you, yep, put that, cold. anything goes. You could put a little salt, a little pepper, a little cayenne, however you like it. And look at that. That's pretty nice. You have a super food ramen noodle. Super. That you can make in a cozy small. Super. Super. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. The general election is right around the corner. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about, and you'll instantly get voting rules. See the next big deadline, learn how to take action for your plan, and even help others make their plans. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for November. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. It is time for Superfood Friday, and Joy Bauer is here to show you how to make your sides stand out this time. All That's right. right. Well, here we go. And we're starting with cucumbers. Mm. Kind of shocking, but let mm -hmm. me say that cucumbers are comprised of more than 95% water. So that means they're great in terms of hydrating, mm -hmm. right? And every part of your body functions better, and your energy goes up when you're well hydrated. But here's something really cool. Cucumbers are only 45 calories a cuke. Mm -hmm. They are naturally low in sodium, and they're packed with potassium. So while they deliver good hydration, they also get rid of bloat. They get oh. rid of excess water in that, that you case, don't want. Just give me the whole <laughs> So then well, how are you shaking it up today? I'm going to shake it up by making buffalo cucumbers. Okay, does and it I was what kind of cucumber you no, use? No, you can use any cucumber that you want. We were, so, we're showing a whole variety mm -hmm. over there. So here we have chopped tomato. Mm -hmm. We've got blue cheese and scallions. We're going to add our feature food, all the cukes. So that's the, where you, you scoop out? Yeah. No, well, yeah, this is just um, peeled and mm -hmm. chopped cukes. And now, Al, put some of that sauce on. This is my buffalo dressing and give it a whirl. What's the sauce? And this, the sauce is um, oh, non-fat yeah. Greek yogurt, lots of seasonings, and of course, <laughs> hot <you> sauce. <laughs> and while you're doing that... Wait, I'm, what was it again? It's, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Instagram website. that out. Because yeah. I really want to try it's it. It's on the website. I'm sending okay, you the link. Yes. And then 
just to bring it to the next level, mm -hmm. cut your cucumber lengthwise. Scoop let's it. scoop out the middle. And then just put that in there in the middle. Yeah, and then put this right in the middle and look and how cute these are. Your okay. These right? are great. And you can make it as hot and fiery as you oh, want. Oh, good. Isn't that great? Yeah. yeah. My favorite, Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. I'm glad you said that because they tend to be polarizing. No, and I want to give Brussels sprouts some love. Mm -hmm. So Brussels are part of the cruciferous vegetable family, and they can reduce certain types of cancers, the risk for certain types of cancers. Also, here's a cool fact. One cup delivers more than 100% of your vitamin C for the day. Okay. So for people that don't love them, mm. I'm going to make a version of superfood mm. pigs in blankets. Okay. And I'm calling these Brussels in blankets. Okay. These are trimmed, mm -hmm. sliced in half, right. and you put a little bit of olive oil on them. Okay. And now you take your turkey bacon, nice and lean, mm -hmm. and you're going to wrap your blanket nice around, enough. and you pop it right in the oven on 400 for about 25 minutes, Let and you go. get these delicious and babies. And the kids eat and them, too, if, yeah, you know? Or I've real, seen a lot of picky eaters gobble those down. Real bacon around it, and you've got a hit. <laughs> <laughs> My uh, husband said the same thing. <laughs> and a mommy. Edamame is great. It's almost like a perfect food because it's a blend of plant-based protein, mm -hmm. fiber, and heart-healthy fats. So mm -hmm. it keeps your blood sugars steady mm -hmm. and it sustains your energy levels. And You're it also it has yes, it has minerals in it that can prevent muscle cramping too. So I love edamame steams, sure. right? In mm -hmm. the pot, out of the pot. But to take it to the next level, I'm making garlic sesame edamame. That's sesame oil, okay. some minced garlic. I put some red crushed pepper and salt. You mix that around. Mm, you put it joy. on your steamed edamame, mm. and this is, I think, restaurant really worthy. Good. Isn't mm. that great? I would order these. That's all great. right. You want all That's of these terrific. recipes? They are all really good. Go to today.com slash food. Mm. And guilt-free. Mm -hmm. Cheers to that. We all know that life often sends us in directions we don't expect challenging everything about what we believe in and who we are. I'm sitting down with three incredible women who have harnessed that internal power to lead genuine lives and show us what it means to find yourself. A woman who traversed obstacles and found success. Bozma St. John, or as her Instagram handle says, Badass Bose. Whether she's in the boardroom advocating for a cause that's important to her or being a mom to her daughter, Lael, Bose knows how to wear a number of hats and make history while doing so. After leading marketing at Apple, Uber, and Endeavor, Bose moved to Netflix and became the first black C-suite executive in company history, earning the title of Forbes' most influential CMO in the world. Bose's husband, Peter, was diagnosed with cancer in 2013 and lost his battle within the same year, leaving her a single mother. Bose's upcoming memoir, The Urgent Life, My Story of Love, Loss, and Survival, offers a roadmap to navigating struggles and the battles life throws our way, using her perspective to inspire others. On TikTok, Dylan Mulvaney is using her platform to inspire her more than 8 million followers. Day one of being a girl. Day eight of being a girl. Day 65 of being a girl, and I am at a wedding. For the Broadway actor turned influencer, Finding Herself has found her fame. Through her Days of Girlhood series, Dylan documents her transition for all to see, showcasing everything from dating, Dylan does dating, to wearing a bikini for the first time in front of her family. Now I just have to find the courage to get in the pool. All to motivate others to embrace themselves while working hard in their careers and having fun along the way. Perspective is key for Shari Cuthbert, who relied on personal introspection to build a brand and her world. Hailing from Jamaica and making stops along her journey in Florida, Nevada, and California, Shari harnessed confidence to build a life no matter where she landed. After leaving her corporate job, Shari started her jewelry brand, By Shari, with $100 and the intent to create products that make women feel beautiful. After Bai Shari became a hit with fans like Hailey Bieber, Hilary Duff, and Kate Hudson, Shari created space to focus on her personal life, meeting her partner Matthew in 2020. And for me, I've traversed navigating my career, getting engaged and married in my 40s, and becoming a stepmom, all on my own timeline. When it comes to finding yourself, the old rules tell us to move on from hard chapters of life, to wait to see what life brings our way, 
and to rely on our own strength to make it through life. But do those rules apply today? We'll use what we learned on our journeys to redefine those rules and so much more as we explore the new rules for finding yourself. This is going to be a very interesting, a very vulnerable, a very exciting conversation. So I really appreciate you offering to come and share your stories. Dylan, let's start with you because you've kind of had three self journeys already, right? Yes. I grew up in a very conservative family and I was a very queer little kid. And I actually came to my mom when I was four years old and I said, mom, God made a mistake and put a girl in a boy's body. What was her reaction when you said that? You know, she's, I think she said, you're perfect the way you are. God doesn't make mistakes. And in a way, I know I'm not a mistake. Mm -hmm. I know that this being trans was part of my journey. I actually came out, I was that the second piece of the puzzle. There was the gay boy, and then there was the non-binary portion. And ultimately, I found that I could no longer just be non-binary. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm a girl. This is happening. Do you feel like you're in a happy place right now? Oh, babe, I, <laughs> I just think how special that the universe waited to introduce me to the world until I was a woman. And I just have to thank you because I think one of my biggest fears has been being accepted by other women and being invited into womanhood. Mm. Um, so to be sitting with three gorgeous ladies oh. feels really special. Oh, well, thank you for saying that. I feel sad that you have not felt welcome like that. I'm glad that you could be part of this discussion. Yes. Tell me about your journey because I know that <laughs> You've had a lot of chapters as well. Yes. Even though I was born in the United States, I lived outside of the United States for a long time. And by the time my family returned, I was 12, already had an, a Ghanaian accent, ate Ghanaian food. I felt very othered in Colorado Springs, Colorado. So there was just a lot of um, introspection about how I would be because I couldn't pretend to be anything that I wasn't. Right. And so that first... I would say like introduction to my own identity and then having to stand strong in it, I believe formed the rest of my life. And so therefore it's like, look, I can walk into corporate boardrooms and understand who I am and walk in that way. Is there a corporate identity that you felt like you needed to have, that a, a box you oh, needed absolutely. to fit in? And have you altered that or have you made your own? Oh, yeah, first of all, Yes, there, there is absolutely a corporate identity that exists. Uh, it is pretty specific. You know, it's, it's very white male-centered. Do you feel like you have to mute your femininity oh, in the workplace? Oh, yes, 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 oh. for sure. That makes me sad. I distinctly remember, and even recently, you know, thinking about how high-pitched my voice gets when I'm excited or I'm upset mm -hmm. or I'm frustrated or like sitting on my hands, because you can see I like to talk my hands a lot, <laughs> and I got nails, so you know, <laughs> I like to do that. In the boardroom. <laughs> okay, yes. And, um, or even using cultural references. Or accent, do you, does your accent ever come out? When I'm very upset, of course. Oh yeah, that's how I'm I out, am. I'm out here, you yeah. know, and all of a sudden I'm talking to you like my mother, you know? <laughs> and so those types of things were boxes that, or the, the ways I had to change myself that you probably can't see. So you, you are doing you now, and yeah. do you feel like at this point you know who you are and you do it your way, and that's why success has happened? Ooh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. I was freed, <laughs> you know? It was like after I put away all of those things, I, I knew it like, you know, within the first five years of being in the corporate space mm -hmm. that I'm not going to fit this box, therefore I'm not going to get to that corner office. So you know what? I'm going to settle for the things I get, and I'll just be myself. You know, and then whatever happens, happens. And, and that, and that's like that's what actually unleashed everything. Right. Bravo. <laughs> and yes, what's better than that? And I feel like Shara, you have had sort of a similar, sort of a similar story. Where yes, born in the U.S. but raised in Jamaica, and then I didn't come back until the end of high school, which in itself <laughs> was a discovery period. Being a child of an immigrant, we don't really have the same playbooks that like a lot of parents hear, like, you know, you need to go to college, this is what you do, this is the things you need to do. We had to like figure that out. Finding myself through my creativity was really important. I moved to Hawaii <laughs> on a whim. I went for a wedding and I was like, this kind of feels nice. It feels like Jamaica, <laughs> but it's the US, so I'm just gonna stay. <laughs> like, it's pretty great mm -hmm. here. This is like kind of nice to get all the same things I wanted in Jamaica, but it was here. Yeah. Kind of took a breather 
to like rediscover who I was and what I really wanted in life. There was this Jamaican saying that's like, I is who I is. Mm. And I feel like you are truly who you are at the core. In reality, you are who you are underneath. And it's just when that moment comes where you own it. And yeah. you take the layers off. Yeah. And you take the makeup and the, the hats off. And you just truly own who you are as a woman. I feel like confidence and making mistakes and giving mm -hmm. yourself grace mm -hmm. comes with choosing a lane and staying in that lane and sticking by what you believe in. And if something doesn't fit or doesn't work, as long as you are consistently in that lane and lead with kindness and generosity and being your own best friend, I really don't think you can go against yourself. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's how you find your personal identity and that's how you find your strength and confidence. It's building <laughs> your own foundation on what you stand on so that nothing wavers you. Yes. And also saying, that's your journey, and this is mine. Do you feel like you have taken multiple lanes and finally ended up on yours? Yes. No? Okay. Yes, I've made, like, I've made a lot of life mistakes. Mm -hmm. I've apologized for them, either to the person or to myself, and yes. learned to give myself you know, mm -hmm. space and grace and the ability to fail. And I know that there are so many other people out there who are feeling this, and especially on this topic, so take a look. I had the picture perfect life, a 30 year marriage to a good man, two sons, financial security, and yet I was restless. In my mid fifties with an empty nest, I turned to writing and one day I unearthed a deeply buried truth. I was gay. I reluctantly ended my marriage, came out, moved to a new city, started a new career, engaged with a queer community, found a new love, and married her. Now I wake up every day excited about what's ahead. I'm proud of who I am, and still, there are moments when I feel deep grief about leaving my old life. My question is, how do I hold on to the joy of living authentically while feeling grief and loss about what I've left behind? Now, we are just for women talking and are not grief counselors, but I think that as human beings, mm -hmm. we can watch that and say, oh, I love her. <laughs> I, want to, I want to hug her right now. I know, same. What did you feel when you watched that? I saw a woman that was really battling with feeling selfish. And I think the, mm -hmm. the term selfish is something I've had to really get over because sometimes we have to be. Mm -hmm. And that's someone that finally found their true selves. And I'm so, like, I wanna be her cheerleader right now <laughs> because, you know, I'm in a place where I'm still finding it relatively young. And, and when you go and you have a family and you are in a marriage, it makes it that much harder. You've got the, that baggage there. But I what I would say to her is that process of grieving that there she's grieving a marriage she's gr you know grieving this family system that she had built um, it will be worth it whatever's on the other side I mean on the subject of grief I mean my husband passed away from cancer yeah. uh, almost nine eight years ago now and um, so it's still unbelievable to me you know there there's certain days where it feels like oh gosh that was a lifetime ago right. so much has happened and then yesterday and then right? yeah and then sometimes it hits me as if it happened yesterday. So when I was mm. watching that, I could feel the grief of like, gosh, I had this thing and now it's gone. You know, and one way that I've been able to manage my grief, because I don't ever think you ever get over it. You know, people always say that. They're mm -hmm. like, oh, time heals all wounds. I'm like, what mm -hmm. time? And what, what are you talking about? Right. Like all you do is learn how to live with it. The celebration of what was takes some of that pain of what won't be. What life would I have now if I was still a married woman instead of a widow, instead of a single mom? Mm -hmm. You know, but I celebrate the things that I had. And that is actually what gives me joy. Yeah, my mom, she says that she's still grieving a son. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that really bothered me at first because I was like, well, look at me now, look at how happy I am. And then I realized, oh, that's her grief, it's not mine. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna take that on. And Shari, you've experienced loss as well in different forms. Mm -hmm. what, how do you sort of put that in either a box or assimilate that into making it just part of your life? I mean, I know it's, I hate when people say, 
you know, you close a chapter because it's not a closed chapter. It is a chapter in an ongoing story. So mm -hmm. I feel like what we're all saying, the new rule of just accepting that there is grief and there is loss mm -hmm. and that to each their own and you're allowed to feel, but also it's important to use it for growth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that they can, it can be both things. Mm -hmm. You can. They're not exclusive. They're of not each exclusive. exclusive. Like you can grieve and also right. celebrate. Mm -hmm. There's, it's and. Yes. There's lots and lots of and. Yes. <laughs> well, this has been a great first part of this conversation, and we will continue right after this. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at eight on NBC News Now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. The general election is right around the corner. If you have voting questions, we have voting answers. Head to NBCNews.com slash plan your vote. You'll find voter registration deadlines, early voting dates, vote by mail information, and so much more. Because some of the rules have changed since 2020. And now's the time to start planning for your November vote. What's the state of the United States? That is up to you. On your mark, get set, plan your vote. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> the general election is right around the corner. If you have voting questions, we have voting answers. Head to NBCNews.com slash plan your vote. You'll find voter registration deadlines, early voting dates, vote by mail information, and so much more. Because some of the rules have changed since 2020. And now's the time to start planning for your November vote. What's the state of the United States? That is up to you. On your mark, get set, plan your vote. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. I wanted to get into gaining confidence after major life transitions. So, Shar, you have had to start over a couple of times mm -hmm. in a couple of different aspects of life. So, what has been the biggest, I guess, the greatest emotion about starting in a new place? Mm -hmm. Ooh, um, I would say, I mean, the unknown. That in itself is very scary for a lot of people, but I, I actually take a little bit of joy in that. Mm -hmm. It's like building a new home, building a new space, meeting new people. My family is in Miami. I'm moving back and I'm getting to do it with my partner, like my new boyfriend. So that's very exciting. That is. Um, yes. I love that you put a positive spin to start that conversation. You're about to go through a huge transition. Yeah. Now I'm looking at, you know, into surgeries mm -hmm. and all sorts of really major transitions. What I've realized with like womanhood is not about what we wear or, or, or you know, the makeup that we put on. It's but it can help sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I know that when I am in an outfit that makes me feel really good, that, that gets me a little bit step closer to, to who I wanna be. And I really struggle with is the people that don't think I should be doing these things or think mm -hmm. that what I'm doing is evil or that, you know. Do you that, care? I, I do, I'm very sensitive. And mm -hmm. I think because my now job is online for millions of people watching, I, it opens me up to a lot of hate. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, somebody criticizing me for something that makes me happy and has no effect on their lives or that they don't even know me personally, I just don't get that. And I'm yeah. so glad you're acknowledging 
I think to some degree acknowledging that you know you care about what people think you know oh, because yeah. I think so many people pretend like they don't and they really do and that's actually more harmful yeah you know, right. like actually 100%. saying that like no I care and by the way there is actually nothing wrong with that but I actually <laughs> made a video talking to my haters saying like hey just so you know like you you do make me cry or right. you do, you're hurting my because feelings because some mm -hmm. people I think look at online creators or influencers, I hate that word, um, <laughs> as these characters. And babe, I'm a real person. When did you stop caring so much? I, you know, I don't know if there's a magical age. Okay. okay so don't wait for that birthday. Don't I, like, you know, you're like, I'm at 30. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You're like 30 I, and I, I'm, I'm dragging her to 42. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But I do think that there are, I think there are certain things that you begin to care less about. I, I admire all of you and your strength to even be here to talk about it. And um, we have some people who also um, want to share their stories and I think can help a lot of people. So take a look. As a U.S. immigrant, I am no stranger to change. My parents, sister and I moved to Savannah, Georgia from the former Soviet Union when I was a child. At the age of 20, I moved to Illinois where I graduated from college got married, and raised two wonderful children. Outside of an occasional substitute gig, I was a stay-at-home mom for more than 12 years. After 23 years of marriage, my husband and I decided to get a divorce. With both of my kids in college, I now find myself newly single, in need of a career, and an empty nester. I'm planning to move back to my hometown of Savannah, Georgia, with only the belongings I can fit in my car. My question is, how do I take advantage of this opportunity for a fresh start? I love that question. What, what struck you and how did you <sighs> personally relate? She's lived a life. Mm -hmm. She's been married, she has kids, and now, yes, obviously divorce is hard, but she's she can do whatever she wants right now. Listen, it is scary, and don't get me wrong, there is all kinds of things that come along with it. There is, you know, financial burdens, and you know, obviously just the backbreaking moving of like relocating is never fun for anybody, but there should be excitement. It's I'm actually thinking of calling like renovation, you know, mm. versus like the restart, mm -hmm. because the skills that she has as a homemaker, those skills are transferable. You know, and so how do you use those mm -hmm. skills in your new life? So let's change for the new rule. Let's change, as we approach transitions and change, the word scary mm -hmm. to the word exciting, mm -hmm. to the yeah. word new. Yeah. I firmly believe it's like meeting the universe halfway. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is that she's looking to experience or that she's hoping to um, conquer, I think it's putting yourself out there, trying new things. I love the meet the universe halfway because I do think that a lot of people they're like, I'm just gonna sit here and wait and manifest mm, and right. wait for the mm. world to come to me. Like, like and like, get active, yeah. baby. I love that too. Let's show up mm -hmm. and, and be excited. And, and let's show up <laughs> and let's be excited. <laughs> and let's go to break, and then we'll be right back with much more. The general election is right around the corner. If you have voting questions, we have voting answers. Head to NBCNews.com slash plan your vote. You'll find voter registration deadlines, early voting dates, vote by mail information, and so much more. Because some of the rules have changed since 2020. And now's the time to start planning for your November vote. What's the state of the United States? That is up to you. On your mark, get set, plan your vote. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it.
Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. The general election is right around the corner. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about and you'll instantly get voting rules. See the next big deadline, learn how to take action for your plan, and even help others make their plans. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for November. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight and expert analysis. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We touched on this a little bit, but exploring passion projects and interests. I'll start with you, because you had, <laughs> I mean, your career has been so incredible so far, just, and you're just in your mid-40s and just starting. <laughs> Have a book yes. coming out. So what is something that you can share that has motivated you to forge forward? Yeah. Um, well, I think part of it is um, accepting the fact that I'm a multi-hyphenate. I would always be interested in people who had like multi-hyphenate things. You know, so it's like, how do they do that? And I realized that, like, but I do that. I just don't name it. You know, I just don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, and when it was time for me to write my book, and I'm talking about, like, for real, it was time. I could feel it. You know, I needed to get my story out, and it's my memoir. Uh, it is based and anchored in my husband's passing. Uh, and so the grief around that and other griefs I've had in my life I used to talk about essentially where I am now, you know, and how I survived those types of things. Being able to claim other titles, <laughs> because look, I'm an author, baby. Now you, you know are, baby. I am. <laughs> 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 and so it's like being able to take something that, you know, has been such a tragedy in my life and then turn it into a passion, which now I can share with the world is miraculous to me. So, so what, can't, what can't I do? Give me right? your, brag about yourself for a second. <laughs> give me your hyphens. My I'm hyphens, a. Yes. I am a, exec, a business executive, a Hall of Fame business executive, by the way. Let me just give myself my, all my flowers. Hall of Fame business executive. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an author. I'm a mom. I'm a sister. And I twerk like nobody can, baby. Let me tell you. We're going out after this. <laughs> <laughs> Was there power in saying, that title just Oh, now. yes, yes, <laughs> because it's like claiming it for myself. And it's yeah. like if we had more empowering conversations like this, where it's like, tell me all the things you do, girl. Let me go ahead and celebrate <laughs> right. you. Right, let me clap. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yes, give me some applause. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's like that, that would be, I think, amazing for all of us. Do you feel the same way? <sighs> yes. <laughs> Sometimes I forget all the different hats that I wear, because mm. to me, I'm... For the longest time, I didn't call myself the CEO of my company. I was the founder and creative director. And they were like, do you not run the company? And I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I do that, too. And they're like, and do you not do that? And do you? And I was like, yeah, I do all those things. They're like, own it. Well, CEO. Yes, 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 yes. Really? yes. Applause, applause. <laughs> um, and theater has been such a passion project for you. Uh, yes. Uh, speaking of multi And that's what's so funny is that the world doesn't even know that chapter of my life so much. And I just, I sang for the first time on TikTok like a few weeks ago and they're like, oh, you can sing? I'm like, yes, <laughs> I went to college for it. <laughs> What's so great about where we are at is as women specifically too, is we're not, we don't just have to be moms now. Mm -hmm. We don't have to just mm -hmm. be the CEO. You, we can be a lot of things. And mm -hmm. I want to be a mom one day. That's going to be a passion for me. I think seeing mm -hmm. a trans woman as a mom is going to mm -hmm. be very important. But I'm not giving up all this other stuff that I'm doing, too. So having passion projects are so important, but it's hard because so many of us have so many responsibilities. And I think um, it's hard to find time for yourself. And there's one woman who shared her story and I think can help talk about this topic. So let's take a look. I am a full-time caregiver to my 83-year-old mother. She was diagnosed with dementia two years ago. While my siblings' health 
our mother lives with me. They are all married and after spending time with her, can go home to their families for a break. I struggled to have an identity outside my role as a caregiver. I have been dated in the last five to 10 years and I find I no longer have the time or energy to participate in the charitable work that used to bring me joy. My question is, how do I make space for my own passions and interests so I don't lose myself in the process of caring for my mother? So again, we're not, um you know, therapists or grief counselors, but we are um, women who want to motivate other women. Mm -hmm. So what would be your advice? The same way she schedules time for her mom's medication or, you know, taking her out or whatever she needs to do for herself is also managing to carve out and like schedule that time in to take care of herself and whatever it that is that makes her happy and that what she needs to do for herself because that's what's going to keep her grounded. One very, very big lesson I learned uh, when my husband passed away was to ask for help. Can the new rule be it's okay to not be okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's okay to ask for help yes. and it's okay yes. Yes. to be selfish sometimes? Yes. And to say no, 100%. I think being the CMO or the CEO needs to have the same weight as going on the yoga retreat mm -hmm. yes. or you know raising your child mm -hmm. you know it has to how about the cso chief self officer Ooh. Yeah. Okay. right <laughs> we just for created that, that title we are reporting yes for chief <laughs> self officer yes, i love that i just want to thank all of you for your vulnerability and for showing up which was one of our rules and hopefully together we can help empower other women and other people out there who can use just the the advice and the guidance. So thank you thank for you. being thank here. You. Thank, thank you, you so much. Us. And thank you for joining us. And I guarantee you we will be back with much more very soon on The New Rules with me, Jill Martin. Hi, and welcome to our Start Today special. I'm Al Roker. Our, our Start Today walking challenge, sponsored by Easy Spirit, began with a really simple goal, just to let's all get outside, go for a walk. But uh, unbelievably, it has grown into something incredible. There are over 100,000 of you who are members of our online community, where everybody relies on each other for support and motivation. And this month, we wanted to kick it up a notch. Our November walking challenge is going to prepare us for walking or running a 5K. All you need to do? Commit to six weeks of training. That's it. And we're going to do it together and reach that goal. But maybe you need a little extra motivation to get started on your walking journey. So just hang out. You could sit or you could stand and watch and maybe walk in place. Because over the next half hour, we're bringing you some of our favorite Start Today success stories. We begin with a member of our Start Today community. Christy Pham found success with our fitness plan and now is inspiring others to get active one step at a time. But she did sit down with us over the summer to give us a hint. Take a look. Three years ago, I had a miscarriage, which took a toll on my mental and physical health. I was in a dark spot. I was struggling with my weight and I wanted to make a change. I decided to commit to walking every day for a hundred days. I started on my own, but once I saw Al kick off the Start Today walking plan, we're gonna get walking, and joined the Facebook community, I suddenly had 80,000 people cheering me on and walking with me. My motivation skyrocketed. I noticed changes quickly. When I started walking in my hilly neighborhood, I had to stop and slow down along the way. Now those same hills are a breeze. My body changed too. Inches were coming off, I had more energy, and reduced depression and anxiety. For motivation, I have some friendly competition with a group of friends tracking our steps on our fitness watches, mainly looking to beat ourselves from past weeks. When I shared my progress in the Start Today group, I was overwhelmed by hundreds of positive comments, including from Al himself. My commitment to walking is now a permanent change. I'm well past my 100 days, and I have no plans to stop. And Christy, good morning. Yay. We're so Welcome. excited to hear your story in person um, because it really is so motivating. Because mm -hmm. I'd imagine those first couple of days, the first week or two, when you actually decide to do this crazy thing, it's tough, right? It's, what were you feeling? It's very tough. Um, one of the things that I learned is that you don't need the motivation to start. Mm -hmm. You get out there and the motivation will follow. Ooh. Mm -hmm. 
I love that. We Go ahead, Al. No, well, I just was going to say, you've gotten to the point now, and I think I'm kind of in the same point, where you actually crave, physically mm. crave, and mentally crave getting out there. If you don't, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, I need to get out of there. Absolutely. Um, when I first started, I was having a lot of health anxiety. And within a few weeks, when I started walking, I saw that anxiety go down. And mm. so very quickly, I knew that I needed to get out there and do that walk in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have the anxiety anymore. See, that's what I wanted to ask you, because I think, you know, quite often we talk about exercising, it's always weight, which, look, it bothers a lot of us, or, or yeah. what's on the scale, inches. But it's more than that, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. And you don't have to walk 20 miles. I started with 20 minutes and I'm up to two miles a day and that can change your life. It can change your body. I'd imagine it's, it's a weird thing, you know, to get that need to crave the exercise. You probably thought you'd never get to that point, but there are little victories you've had along the way that aren't scale related. So what have been some, you know, profound moments for you through this whole process? Absolutely. Um, one of the biggest moments was um, my identity changed. Mm. Yeah, it, before it was, I was the plus size mom. I was worried about fitting in the seat or the chair. And um, even my son would refer to me as like the big mom. Uh -huh. And um, a few weeks ago, he saw a woman walking and he goes, mom, look, there's a, there's a walker like you. Mm -hmm. And it was an average size woman. And to have him refer to me mm -hmm. as this average size woman was Amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. It changes the way you feel about yes. yourself. I mean, self-esteem, all that, and and you find yourself. Uh, I think you're the same way I am, Christy. That you now start to push yourself. So instead of just walking, maybe add a little jogging to it mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. you, did, that, did that surprise you? Absolutely. I never thought that I would be jogging 137 days in, but at the 130 mark, I started jogging short intervals. Mm -hmm. So if I can do it, anybody out there can do yeah. it. That's so yeah. great. We started this start today, and Al was out there walking on the plaza. Al, did you have any idea no, not much what you guys were going to do? You know, well, we're going to walk, see who's going to who's going to join this. Yeah. So now we got to uh, It's like, like your, your community, community right? Support too. It is an exceptional group. That's There's awesome. 180,000 wow. people and they are absolutely super motivational. You guys have a small city. Yes. I know. That's us. We're a whole village. We're a whole village. Walking every day. That's so good. Thank you, Chris. That's great. Thank nice you so to meet you. It's so nice to meet you. Keep up the good work. Thank yeah. you. Christy says last time we spoke, she logged her 200th walk, down more than 80 pounds, and her energy is off the chart. Way to go, Christy, and keep logging those steps. Well, coming up, we're going to meet a couple who are walking miles side by side, and they say it's changed their lives in a big way. Then, a sisterhood of walking women stepping up for each other, and now that movement is spreading to cities all around the country. We'll be right back. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The general election is right around the corner. If you have voting questions, we have voting answers. Head to NBCNews.com slash plan your vote. You'll find voter registration deadlines, early voting dates, vote by mail information, and so much more. Because some of the rules have changed since 2020. And now's the time to start planning for your November vote. What's the state of the United States? That is up to you. On your mark, get set, plan your vote. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. And welcome back to our Start Today walking special. Of course, walking is great for physical health, but also helps relieve stress and can increase mindfulness. I recently met one couple that's taking walking to a whole new level, lacing up their sneakers and logging some serious miles. The ability to get outside and to be physically active during this time was frankly indispensable for our emotional health. 
Mike Varley and Jesse Hyatt of Brooklyn, New York, had always made a hobby out of getting their steps in. We decided to walk from San Diego to LA, which is 120 miles. We did the length of Vermont, and we went from the Pacific Ocean to Olympia, Washington. But during the COVID-19 pandemic, they stepped up their game. I pitched to Jesse this crazy idea that we walk five marathons a week for one calendar year around New York City. Driven by a desire to challenge themselves mentally and physically, the couple began walking 26.2 miles a day, multiple times a week, starting in June 2020. I have been working in the fashion and textile industry. She had her business and still uh, managed to walk three days a week, and uh, I walked the five days a week for the one calendar year. Mike leaving his job at a video game company to dedicate himself full-time to the project. Before they hit the pavement, the two spending 18 months planning everything from their routes to meals to their outfits. This was a full-time job. How did you financially support yourselves? When I worked at the video game company, a large portion of my responsibility was tracking the budget. I have some good spreadsheet skills. Part of the 18 months was making sure that we saved up enough money to do this comfortably. So to take me through a typical walk. The average day was nine and a half hours. And the first three months, what we were doing was hitting every neighborhood in New York City. And uh, after we started doing a bunch of themed walks, we did one that was famous Brooklyn female vocalists and the high schools they went to, uh, which was great. It really ran the gamut. Over the course of the year, Mike and Jesse logged 7,000 miles, documenting their journey on their YouTube channel and podcast. They say the benefits went well beyond calories burned. If I have a slight pain in my calf, that will go away. If I have that thought that's really making me feel nervous or uncomfortable, that will also go away. And it really was interesting just how the physicality of it um, mirrored and paralleled the mental um, experience. So how, how did you guys change physically? I think I lost somewhere between 15 and 20 pounds, something that was uh, the most affirming for me was that I still had like a little bit of uh, belly fat going on at the end of the, the whole thing. If you're walking 7,000 miles and you still have a little bit of belly fat, uh, maybe your body's okay. You know, like my body is what it is. The walks pushed Jesse and Mike to make discoveries about themselves and each other. I have the ability to conquer challenges and, and know that difficult experiences won't be forever. I learned that I'm definitely with the right person. This project was so special to us and so important. So we ended up inviting our friends and family to join us for parts of our final marathon. And we got married in Marine Park at the very end of the marathon. It was honestly one of the best days of my life. What would you say to somebody who's thinking, I'd like to do something like this. It's just one step at a time. It doesn't need to be 26.2 miles each day. That is extreme. You can walk around your block. It could be one mile a day. It's just getting out and feeling the air and feeling the pavement or the grass under your feet. It's such a game changer. It feels so good. What an inspiring story. I tell you, it wants to keep me walking right now. Well, from a couple to a sisterhood, the group City Girls Who Walk is made up of women who are bonding one step at a time. And trust me, when they go on a walk, you cannot miss them. Dylan recently found out how it all began. If you would have told me 250 people would come to a walk in New York City, I would have never believed you. <laughs> Every walk is a good walk for Brianna Cohn. It's one thing to go for a walk or go for a walk with friends, but you turned this into something huge. I was feeling a little lonely, a little isolated, and I was like, what if I post it on my TikTok? What if we did a walk club where we just like drink our coffee, we chit chat, we leave our worries behind. The 28-year-old fitness trainer who had already amassed millions of followers across TikTok and Instagram her community if they would join her for a walk around New York City's Pier 45. People were like, oh my God, I want to join. This sounds amazing. Like people were sending it to their friends and I was not expecting that. I was expecting like 10, 20 people. On her first group walk back in March of this year, more than 100 women showed up for a stroll and City Girls Who Walk was born. 
How would you describe the perfect walk? You listen to that feel good music and you just get lost, lost outside, lost in the time and just a quick like 30, 30 minute walk. That's all you need. Brianna didn't want the walking group to be a huge commitment. The plan was once a week for a 40 minute walk. That's it. Some girls like go to brunch after, some just hang out and chat. What is it about walking with others? When you're walking by yourself, I feel like so many thoughts come into your head. But if you walk with someone else, you can kind of forget all of that and just talk about life and just like feel that connection. The event blew up on social media with hundreds of women showing up week after week, forming a sisterhood in the process. So who goes on these walks? Who's walking together? It ranges, not kidding, from like 18 to 65, 70, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Soon, women in other cities like Philadelphia, Boise, and Phoenix were creating their own branches of City Girls Who Walk. What's some of the most meaningful feedback you've received from this? I actually pulled up one of my favorite quotes that somebody said to me. They said, City Girls Who Walk has changed my life. It is so, so much richer and more full of love with dear new friends in a season when I really, really needed them. I can't thank you enough. How so does that make you feel? It's, it honestly, like, it could bring me to tears. Like, it's helped so many girls, and that's exactly why I started it. The future is bright for Brianna. She started weekly picnics for city girls who don't feel like walking and is hoping to expand to group fitness classes as well. What advice would you have for folks at home watching this who just kind of need that extra push to get off the couch and to just get outside? I would love every single person to come. Just take that first step. Just like get off the couch, come. You don't have no idea like who's gonna be there, who you're gonna meet. It could be your best friend for like your life. Dylan, thanks so much. And City Girls Who Walk just keeps on growing. They told us their last couple of walks, get this, had more than 400 folks walking with them. That is awesome. So by now, I know you are motivated to get moving. So our Star Today leader, fitness expert Stephanie Mansour, is going to share a full body workout that you can do anywhere. We'll be right back. The general election is right around the corner. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about, and you'll instantly get voting rules. See the next big deadline, learn how to take action for your plan, and even help others make their plans. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for November. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Hey, I'm Hallie. It's good to be with you tonight. There's another legal filing today, and I want to cut through some of the weedsy stuff. And let's just, like, get to the point. They have started to vote on the PACT Act. If you're like, Hallie, stop speaking Washingtonese. This bill would basically give health care to veterans who have exposed to these toxic chemicals. So Scott, I'm trying to make this as not D.C. as possible. The increased sort of anger that we've seen now in politics. I saw you searching for, I think, your microphone, Danny. You are out. I was you trying to do it on the slide. Live TV, man. It's okay. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. <laughs> Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide. How's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back to Start Today. Okay, so we've heard some incredible success stories, and now we want to help you get started on your own journey. Today, fitness contributor Stephanie Mansoura leads our Start Today online community. And this summer, she stopped by Hoda and Jenna with three women to share her blueprint to building a walking routine. She brought along these three members of our group to share the reasons why they walk. My name is Cherie Dampier. I'm 56 years old and I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I work in 
Department of Social Services. I began the Start Today program during the heart of the pandemic. Stephanie and the group itself was very encouraging. I am doing our June workout plan while I'm talking to you. I love to walk around New York City. The exercise became just a part of my life and it became fun. I would encourage anyone, if you want to take charge of your health, you can do it. My name is Maura O'Connor Service. I'm 56 years old and I'm from Orfield, Pennsylvania. I started the Start Today program back in October of 2021. During the pandemic, I did put on 40 pounds. When you're in your you know, mid to late 50s and you have the hormones and the menopause and you've had children, it's an uphill battle. Hearing Steph just say, just do five minutes, just do a little bit. That really helped me. Hi, my name is Jessica. I'm 45 years old and I live in Bethel, Connecticut. Since I started, I have a set goal of 6,000 steps and I've increased it as the months have gone on. I've lost 25 pounds and lowered my cholesterol 20 points with Stephanie's motivation and energy and all the positive um, comments from everybody on the site. It's just been, it's been great. Amazing. Amazing. That's amazing. All right, we're going to talk to you guys in just one second. But, Stephanie, people are looking and saying, wait, I want to walk. But what's, like, your number one tip? What should we do first day? The number one tip right now, if you're watching at home, stand up off the couch, get off your chair, and just start with a few Just marching steps. right in front yes. of you. Yes. yes. Our Today.com workout plans only require 20 minutes a day. But if 20 minutes of walking seems too much, guys, go ahead and just aim for 10 steps. Then up the ante and go for 60 seconds and then five minutes and slow and steadily build your way mm -hmm. up to those 20 minutes a day. I mean, that's so smart. Okay, Jessica, let's start with you. What's something you want to work on? So I'm an online teacher and I sit a lot during the day. I don't have, I don't get up. Yeah. So I think what I'm, what I need help with is just the motivation to get out of my chair mm -hmm. and leave that computer. Yes. yes. And what you can see here is Jessica's a go-getter. She's already lost 25 pounds Amazing. this year alone and she set her step goal for herself. So what I recommend is instead of saying, okay, every hour I'm going to get up and walk around the house. She's not doing any of that right now. So let's say we're just going to do it one time a day. Once a and day. And if you pick once a day, yeah. then after a week of proving to yourself that you can get up once a day, then we can up it to twice a day. But slow right. and steady really does win the race, and she's a great example of that. Right, let's talk. Shuri, if there's something you want to work on, what would that be? It would be eating and nutrition. During yeah. the pandemic, I dropped at least 65 pounds. Wow. So the goal what? for me is it's a lifestyle. <laughs> it's not about the number on right. the scale. Right. It's a lifestyle. And going forward, maintaining that lifestyle. That's style. a good You're that's incredible. Good. All right, so what do you think, Steph? Yes, so I always say we're going to start with habit creation, and then we're going to get to lifestyle transformation. So Cherie's already got the exercise part down. When it comes to food, what I like to focus on is looking at food as fuel. We're not yeah. looking at food as good or bad, or we're good or we're bad because yeah. we eat certain things. We're looking at how can we sustain that healthy lifestyle, how can we fuel our bodies, and how can we consume more nutrients and let any of the junk food let that be there yeah but focus on the nutrient dense yeah. food first so smart okay Maura what about you um I am in my mid to late 50s I would say yeah, yeah. and I have not I've been on this journey for a while now and I've not seen the scale move yeah. yeah or inches in my clothing yeah and I am menopausal and yeah. all, hormonal yes all and the stuff I am just wondering how I could cut that though so I could see a little bit of results oh, okay That's, all right that's a good, good question yes, sometimes a, you get stuck yes and you get frustrated yeah. but what I like to focus on is those non-scale victories they're almost just as important as the scale so if you're feeling an increase in energy if you're sleeping better if your mood if you feel happier yes. if you feel more motivated which Myra does so the second thing that I would recommend doing aside from focusing on non-scale victories is also how can we level out those blood sugar levels especially when we're hormonal and going through menopause by eating protein every few hours that's how we're gonna mm, stabilize our blood that. pressure yeah. and also that's how we're gonna stabilize our hormonal imbalances as well so start with protein every three to four hours I've got tons of food tips guys on our start today Facebook page so this is where these ladies, ladies found me so, wow y'all are so inspiring awesome. and we're gonna be checking in with y'all too Stephanie always brings the great advice and up next you're gonna show us how to take it beyond walking we're gonna show you how to add simple strength training moves to the routine you use when we come right back you get one beautiful so life to live Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. <laughs> love you too. <laughs> 
Hey, I'm Hallie. It's good to be with you tonight. There's another legal filing today, and I want to cut through some of the weedsy stuff. And let's just, like, get to the point. They have started to vote on the PACT Act. If you're like, Hallie, stop speaking Washingtonese. This bill would basically give health care to veterans who have exposed to these toxic chemicals. So Scott, I'm trying to make this as not D.C. as possible. The increased sort of anger that we've seen now in politics. I saw you searching for, I think, your microphone, Danny. You are out. I was you trying to it. do it on the slide. Live TV, man. It's okay. Good evening from New Orleans. Well, nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load every single morning. We are back with Start Today. Hey, are you one of the 100,000 online community members who've done wonders with walking? Well, if you're not, you can still join in. But if you are, you may want to add even more moves to your fitness routine. Today, fitness contributor Stephanie Monsor back recently had some great ways to get stronger while we walk. Fitness trainer Stephanie Monsor, who leads our Start Today Facebook group, is here along with some of our great Start Today Facebook members. Uh, now, before we start out and get to you, Steph, I want to—we've got a, just some um, amazing folks here. We've first of all got uh, Elizabeth Rogdakis, uh, Lillian Mora, and Kim Anata. Uh, Atanasu, who is here. I told you I'd get that wrong, but anyway, we finally did. So uh, you're all cancer survivors. We're cancer survivors, and we work for Northwell. Okay. And, and we're nurses. Yeah, and, and you're nurses, so you're doing God's work. We appreciate it. And, and I got to tell you, you know, I was, I'm a cancer, prostate cancer survivor, and my doctor wanted me walking you know, the first week I was back. How has it helped? How did that help I you? had surgery and was walking a week later also. Walking has um, allowed us to encompass many things, mm -hmm. one of them being um, walking for health. Right. Walking for sanity. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we all are in we stressful need that jobs. Now. <laughs> yeah. um, we worked right through COVID, and walking was the way we got out, uh -huh. shared and supported each other, right. okay? And with the group now, I feel I'm a part of a group larger than myself. Yeah, oh, you that's know, terrific. Had, you know, hitting that Facebook page in the morning mm -hmm. and getting whatever tips are coming through to us. Isn't it, did you all like getting a, trying to get it done first thing in the day? Yes, This yes, way, you yes, know, you yes, check yes, the box yes. and you feel like you've accomplished something yes. before you even go out the door. Really appreciate it. Okay, so Steph, mm -hmm. how important, the walking is fantastic. You, you've got a future in this business. <laughs> I, I might just All right, that. there you go. As long as you don't come you after get me. Ready to yeah. be uh, so, Steph, why is it that we, we've done upper body or lower, lower body, but uh -huh. the whole full body thing is yes. important, too? Yes, so we are going to put this all together this month for everyone. So everyone love the upper body workouts, right, ladies? Yes. yes. All right, everyone loves the walking, so uh -huh. we're going to step it up a little bit. We're going to do some lower body exercises as well this month, Al, and that's going to help us propel faster, uh -huh. propel easier in our walks, and also help us with balance and stability. And how important is strength training? Strength training is hugely important, especially as we get older. We're trying to really tighten up those muscles to uh -huh. firm up the bones. Right. And it's helping us to not, you know, have more trips and falls. It okay. helps us to get up and down from the couch easier. Well, Makes us feel better in general, right? We like that. Okay, so what's our first All right, move? so the first exercise, we're actually going to start with the upper body with okay. these dumbbells. So you can work out anywhere, anytime this month. All you need are a set of dumbbells. We've got uh -huh. three pounds here, Al. You and I are stepping it up with six pounds, Yikes. all right? We're going to hug the elbows in. The first move is serve the platter. So we serve the platter forward. We open it out to the side, get a little chest stretch, okay. come back through center, and then hug the elbows back in. Good. So we reach forward, extend out, stretching the chest, come back to center, and hug in. And then how many reps are you going to do? We're doing 10 reps of these. Uh -huh. And Al, this is really important because it's helping us be able to swing our arms with better. Mm -hmm.
better posture right. while we're walking. Strengthening is balance the upper part of body. This too? Balance is we're engaging the core here, so belly button pulls in towards the spine, uh -huh. and then we do this move, you know, 10 times, like I said, right. and then we move on to the next exercise. Okay, what's the next one? All right, so the next exercise is for our lower body, specifically the outer hip, to help us with that stability. So I've got our modification people over here. Uh -huh. You're going to be doing a side leg lift, okay. all right? So we lift that leg out to the side. And then for the full version, we're doing a side lunge and coming to center. So let's everyone do it together. Here we go. Side lunge oh, and center. Side lunge, good. And center. Our modifiers over here, if you have knee issues, hip issues, if your bones or joints just feel creaky, mm -hmm. I want you to do those leg lifts over here and then do the side lunge only if your knees and back feel okay. And okay. again, 10 of these on each side. Right. And then we move on to the next exercise. Next one. Are you ready to get down on the ground? I don't think so. <laughs> I can All get right. down, I just can't get back okay. up again. That's, that's been the big problem. <laughs> All right, so the last exercise Should've is worn for a the skirt. core. <laughs> We're gonna hug the knees in, squeeze uh -huh. the inner thighs together, good. Slowly roll down, abs pull in. Pretend okay. like someone's punching you in the stomach. Good. Yikes. Hold this here for a modification. Step two is lifting the legs up and holding on underneath the legs. Uh -huh. That's step two. Step three is the full V-sit right here. What do you think? Uh, oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> I love watching you all do that. <laughs> Guns giving these people a hand. Huh? Woo! Wow. And, and again, 10 reps. 10 reps. Hold for 10 seconds, 10 uh -huh. times. And then move on to the next ab exercise. And now, in the in the in the program, how often do we do this? Is it like every other day? Yes, we're doing every other day strength training. We want to give our muscles time to recover. So uh -huh. you continue with the 20 minutes a day of walking. But in lieu of walking every other day, you can do this 20 minute strength training routine. All right, Stephanie, thank you, and thank you, ladies. Woo! Really appreciate it. What a workout. Well, for more daily workout tips and motivation, be sure to head to today.com slash start today. And while you're there, check out our November Start Today Walking Challenge. It's a six-week program to help walk or run a 5K. Now, don't be intimidated. Believe me, if I can do it, you can do it. All you need to do is start today. But well, we want to thank you for joining us. I'm Al Roker, and we will see you next time.